Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome back to First Snow. Oh, thank you for the immediate hydrate. <laughs> An instant hydrate. I love it. I love to see it. Got the white can today because it's first snow and snow is white and I'm not imaginative. <laughs> But welcome in, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, apologies in advance. Um, I may talk for a little bit again before going into the game, purely because um, I slept really badly last night and I woke up late. So I've still got like my my waking up voice. I I've not <laughs> I've not warmed my voice up today. <laughs> so I'm a little sleepy. I'm a little bit sleepy, but I figured it's okay because. Especially with visual novels and things like these. Um, it's it's the kind of thing where it's just a nice environment to take your time. Like, there's no rush. There is absolutely no rush. I said absolutely again. No. Why do I keep doing this? <laughs> but there's no rush at all to, to, like, worry about, like, fast-paced gameplay or anything. It's one of the things I really love about visual novels. They're so comfy to just... Take your time. You just take your time. Have a have a take it at your own pace. Go as fast or as slow as you want to. It it's nice. And this one is so good so far too. I'm I'm already loving it. We've done Act One, which um, it was a four-hour stream. I got three hours of game, <laughs> and there was still a lot of that taken taken up with me talking about polynomials for a while. But uh, yeah, I I love visual novels. I love them. It's it's been a while since I like. Just I think it has actually been over a year. It, it would have been please be happy for the last one. I think, because like I've played things like Ghost Trick since then, and also I I do need to get back to Shibuya Scramble as well because that is it's been a while since I played that. We've still got a lot of game left for that. But uh, I may have to write a little recap of what's happened so far before I play that again, because it has been a little while. <laughs> but uh, it's it's been a while since I played like just a a chill a chill visual novel. So it feels really good to be playing this. Like this is I, I've meant to play it for so long, and it's 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 proving itself to be worth the wait. <laughs> but yes, let me go through chat. Let me go through and say hi to everybody. Ba 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 ba. Let's uh. Hold on. I'm. You know what I'm gonna do before I start reading chat. I'm gonna have this hydrate redeem. <laughs> gonna have this hydrate redeem. There we go. Let's get started. I I need the brain cells today. I'm I'm still very sleepy. I'm a sleepy cat. But it's okay because we're chilling. <laughs> Quite literally, with snow, very very chilled. But uh, Bob, congratulations on the first. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Akire. Hello, Rika. Hello, Zariad. Congratulations on getting a uniform. <laughs> Hello, the one of you weep. Hello, Suzume. Hello, Nugs. Snow in April. Yeah, I, I meant to play this game uh, in December. I was going to start this game in December, but la the end of last year was a nightmare for me in many serious, horrible ways. And I never got around to playing it. And so part of me was thinking, do I wait until next December to play it? So it's thematic, but I don't want to wait that long. And I want to play twofold. But I wanted to play this before I play twofold. <laughs> Therefore, I'm playing this in April. <laughs> but uh, a little over a month. Over a month since what? Sorry, I've, I'm, I'm already. I've forgotten what that's in. <laughs> in referral to. Oh goodness, I'm I'm very spacey today. Context fold. Yeah, I. It's like I I know that I don't technically have to play this before I play twofold, but um, but I wanted to. Oh, since I played Shibuya Scramble, it's been way longer than that, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been way way longer. 
Uh, the last Shibuya Scramble stream I did was... I think it may have actually been last year. <laughs> I think it was actually last year. Yeah, it was last, uh, last November. <laughs> And then I've just gotten like so tied up in other things. And I wanted to finish Ghost Trick as well. So Ghost Trick took the priority as visual noveling. So I, I have finished Ghost Trick now, which is why I felt okay picking up First Snow and Twofold as well. But there is still Shibuya Scramble. I really, really want to finish that because that game is so much and so much fun. And we've, we're really, We've had so many Shibuya Scramble streams and it's still, we're still not even, we, there are so many plot points that have not been revealed. <laughs> but we do, we, we have seen Tama's face now at least, so that was good. But, uh, oh, Zaryad, since you've now signed to the contract, it's official that the canon Zaryad is postman Zaryad. Okay. Do you have a black and white cat? I have to know. If not, I have the black and white cat that you can um, spiritually borrow to, to truly embody Postman Pat. <laughs> oh, yeah, time flies. I know, right? It, that's the problem. I feel like the older I get, the the more I like lose track of time easily. I'll be like, oh, I just did that the other month, and then it's been half a year. <laughs> It's so bad though, because I'll I'll mean to get back to people. I'll be like, oh yeah, we should do something soon. And then it's been three months and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I know I said we would do something soon, but this is soon for me. <laughs> time time is fake and being an adult sucks. <laughs> yeah, your crack theory of who was under the mask was right. Yeah, you I I it was good. It was so good. I'm so glad you you guessed that. <laughs> But it's, I think the fun of Shibuya Scramble is that everything seems so random and unhinged and unrelated. And then you realize, actually, it is all related. It all starts tying together. Like, all of the pieces begin to mix together so perfectly. And it's like, you can think you're making five different jigsaw puzzles, but then you realize they're starting to connect in the middle. And it's like, ooh, ooh, look at that. Oh, your cat is only white. Oh, you say unfortunately. I love white cats. And he's very big. Oh, I love big cats as well. Tiffany's very small. It's it's really funny. Uh, some of my friends, uh, some of my best friends who I go to visit a lot, uh, they have a cat called Pandora. I have posted her quite a few times in the Discord server. Pandora looks absolutely huge. She looks so round. But then you pick her up and it's all fluff. There is nothing there. She's so light. You just pick her up and she keeps going because you expect her to be so much heavier than she is. And then on the other side, there is Tiffany. Tiffany looks tiny. She looks so small. She looks like the most tiny, small baby girl. And then you pick her up and she's so heavy. <laughs> she's so much heavier than you expect her to be. Like when you when you see how small she is but the vets have said that uh so long as she's like still playing she's still eating she's not lethargic she's she is technically overweight but it's okay because she's been overweight since she was four years old and she's turning 12 this year so <laughs> so it's like that's like her her average weight like she she doesn't gain weight past this and the one time she did lose weight uh, the vet was like, oh, she's at a healthy weight now. And it turned out it's because she wasn't eating anything because she had problems with her teeth. And that was when she had to have her teeth taken out. And ever since then, she's like gone back to her, like, her regular weight. So it's, so it's the kind of thing where it's like, she's technically overweight, but we know this is her normal weight. Like, this is her, a healthy weight for her. Like, you might look at her and think, oh, a cat that small shouldn't be weighing that much. But she's she's healthy. She's very healthy. Like, the vet always comments on how good she is and how, how well-behaved she is and how she doesn't have any problems. Oh, and we actually took her to the vet recently, too, for her, for her yearly boosters. 
So she had a little checkup at the beds too. Oh, this is amazing. Flashback to the cockroach fighting scene. <laughs> yeah, that was so good. I love I loved how that was called. I, that was the funniest. But yes, Tiff Tiffany is very rotund. She's... It's the kind of situation where if she just lies on her side, she looks normal. But sometimes she'll sit in a way where she just looks so big. She just looks very, very fluffy and round. <laughs> oh, and Grace now. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Uh, your parents always had very big cats. Yeah, it's it's quite surprising. Like, I, I was always surrounded by quite small cats. So the first time I saw, like, a, a bigger breed of cat, I was like, whoa, this cat is large. <laughs> But yeah, but uh, we, we took her to the vets to have her boosters and it's really nice because the vet that we take her to has recently moved to a new location and I was a little bit worried because I was like, I, I don't know where this is. I've not been to this place before. Uh, and mother dearest, can you come with me, please? <laughs> but it's so nice. It's really nice. They've actually changed the vet waiting room. And they've set it up now so that there's separate waiting areas for people with cats and people with dogs. Which is so good because before it was just all one big waiting room and Tiffany would always get stressed out if there were dogs like jumping up and running around in the waiting room. But now it's like it's actually divided. There's the cat section and the dog section. And then I guess people with other pets can just pick whichever side is less busy. <laughs> but it's been really nice and it's set up so nicely inside they've it's like fully decorated they've got like murals on the the walls and stuff uh the main walls on the outside are glass and they've got like these stained glass pictures of animals and it's so so cute like i would share a picture if i didn't want to dox my local van <laughs> like oh that, like i mean i i would share a picture but i don't want to dox my vet and also myself <laughs> But it's really nice. It's really pretty. And when we went in there as well, when the vet was looking over Tiffany, Tiffany was so well behaved, but in like a a little bit of a rebellious way. And she just flopped on the table and did not move. She just like went dead weight. <laughs> and it was so funny because the, the vet was trying to move her around to check to check her over. And he was having to drag her around the table. Because she was not moving. It was so cute. But it was such a nice change to last time she went to the vet. Because that time, uh, she jumped down from the table and tried to make a break for the back room in the vets, where the door is usually shut. So that was... Um, yeah, she, she was way more well behaved this time. But uh, one thing that the vet commented on as well was uh, he was surprised that Tiffany's teeth are as good as they are. Because of her having to have two teeth out, he said, like, usually when cats start having trouble with their teeth, then that's that's it, and you're going to have to look out and all the rest of their teeth are going to have trouble. But I think because we dealt with it as quickly as we did, like, it was recommended to have her teeth removed, and I was just immediately like, if it's best for Tiffany, then I will do it. I will immediately do it. And because we did it so fast, it stopped her having trouble with any of her other teeth, and all of her teeth are fine. So that was like the biggest relief because it's been a couple of years now since she since she had to t have her teeth taken out. Was it a couple of years? It might have only been one year. It's either one or two. It's either one or two years because I, I remember mentioning on stream saying like, hey, if anyone who subs to me this month, uh, it's going towards Tiffany's vet fees. <laughs> I think it was actually after one of my anniversaries because I was... I was getting really emotional about how much I earned through the anniversary and I was just like, thank you, you've paid for Tiffany's vet bills. <laughs> but yeah, because we got that done so quickly, she does not have any trouble with her teeth now. We got rid of the problematic ones and she's good. And that is, that was the, the nicest relief to see that. To, to have the vet say, I'm surprised at how good she's doing. <laughs> It was very nice. Ah, uh, Natasha always tries to leave and Lulu stays. Yeah, Tiffany always used to be very... Very skittish. Very skitty. 
very much a skitty in the vets. She would always try to escape and I would have to hold her. I would have to like have my hands near her. I'd have to have my hand on her back. This time I didn't have to. So I don't know if maybe like the new the new vet premises is helping with that too because she did not seem as stressed out as she usually was. But either way, it was very nice. It was a very good good vet appointment and she was very well behaved. Ah, <laughs> oh, your cat makes sure the vet pays his respect before being visited. That means that if the vet doesn't allow him to sniff him before he touches him, the vet's gonna lose his hand. <laughs> a very regal demeanor. He demands respect. That's fair. I feel all cats deserve respect. But yeah, it was just the funniest sight to me. Like, I wish I could have recorded it. Just Tiffany fully dead weight on the table and the vet like swinging her around with the front paws to try and swivel her. <laughs> it was very cute. And then on the way back, she was so, so good. As soon as we got the carrier back in the car and we were heading back home, she was, she just settled. She just settled and fell asleep. Well, she almost fell asleep. Her head kept perking up. But she kept resting, resting her chin on my hand. I'd poke my fingers through, like, the front of her carrier. And she rested her, her whole body weight through her chin onto my fingers. It was very, very cute. Aldo, hello! It's your kitten's birthday! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, happy birthday, kitty! How, how old is your kitty turning? How old is your cat? Please, please give birthday scritches from me. <laughs> also, Mag, hello, lovely to see you. It's first snow time. I'm so excited to play more of this. Uh, I should probably actually click and start playing soon, because it's otherwise it's going to end up getting to an hour again. <laughs> but it's okay. It's worth it. Oh, she's six today. Big, but a big baby. It's it's okay. All cats are babies. It All, all cats are babies. It is completely fine. Tiffany is 11 years old and she's still a baby. <laughs> oh my goodness, Rika! Thank you so much for gifting a sub to Zariad as well. That is a, a postman congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you for the gift sub. But oh, wish, wish your cat a happy birthday from all of us. Oh, and a gift sub to Aldo as well. Thank you, Bob. Everyone gets subs in here. Let's let's see all those sub badges. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you both so much. I oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, she's in front of the screen. I, well, I still understood what you said. So yes, you you were typing correctly. <laughs> oh, bless her. She's joining in too. Meow. 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 This is my Tiffany impression now. Sometimes she just doesn't meow, she squeaks. She meows when she wants something. Except for when it's time for her kibble penguin, at which point she will just sit in front of me and start squeaking. She'll just turn into like a like a Morse code machine. She'll just be able to like... It's very cute. <laughs> But yeah, Tiffany has a very high-pitched meow as well. Ah, uh, honestly, a little part of me is like, what if I open my bedroom door for a bit? Because I'm home alone at the moment. Xander's gone off into town. And I feel a little bad leaving Tiffany out of my room. Oh no, she's probably just asleep on Xander's bed though, to be fair. Ah, <laughs> uh, but then I'd have to close it when Xander gets back and I'm lazy, so I probably won't. Ah, uh, she just jumped on the bed, yay! I love chirpy cats too, but it's like, it's not even like the, the chirping they do when they see a bird. Like, you know, when cats do their, ah, 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 like the weird bird noises, she just squeaks like a squeaky toy. Sometimes you pick her up and she does a squeak and it really is like you just squeezed the, the tummy of a squeaky toy. <laughs> it's really cute. And Akira, thank you for the dictionary narration. Let's, let's have a dictionary to start with before before I jump back into the game. Because we're just at the start of Act 2 now. Um, it took me 
probably longer to get through Act 1 than it feasibly would take anybody else. But it's because we're enjoying the ride. We're having a good time. Anyway, here is the letter C. <gasps> We've got a new word. Oh. This is a word I, I don't think I've heard used ever. But uh, thank you for the dictionary narration, Redeem. The word we have is comport. Comport is a verb, for example, to comport yourself. And it means to behave in a particular way. But it's a particularly a very formal term, apparently. To comport. C-O-M-P-O-R-T. I've never heard that word used before, ever. That's really interesting. Comport yourself in a refined manner, I guess would be a way of using it. That's really cool. I love when I end up, like, sticking my finger on a word I've never heard, heard of before. Oh, I guess it makes sense because uh, the next word down in the dictionary is compose. So it would be like, compose yourself in a, in this kind of way. And then comport is probably like the same etymological origin as that, maybe? I don't know. I'm just thinking now. <laughs> but that's really cool. But yeah, the example was to comport yourself. But it's to behave in like a specific way. So I guess I guess you could also comport yourself in a quiet manner. Like make sure to, to be quiet. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's really it's really cool as well because it specifies in the dictionary. It's got a little little tag before it that says formal. So it's the kind of thing that would only be said in like a formal context, I presume. Like, that's really interesting. That's so interesting. Comport myself like a cat. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I could imagine it in like a, like a, a document on behavior. Just be like, be sure to comport yourself in a manner befitting this establishment at all times. Like that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Right, that feels like a good warm-up. I feel like my, my my voice is starting to be normal now. <laughs> so I had a, a good warm-up talking about cats. I'm going to have another sip of Monster, though, before we start. Have a little sippy. And let's... Ba -ba 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 load game. Uh, yeah, last time we played, we... We met Eileen, who seemed like she hated us, but I don't think she does. I think she is just, that's just her manner. And it's very easy to misinterpret sometimes. I feel like she's probably the type to have like, like the kind of resting face that makes you intimidated by her. But I don't think she's actually that intimidating. I think she's, I think she's all bark and no bite. She seems great. I love her. And then we've met Wallace, who um, I've, I've got like mixed feelings about Wallace at the moment. I'm hoping he will redeem himself to me later on. But there's been a few moments where he's he's kind of said things where it's like, that's that's a bit, that's a bit, you know, I don't think it's like maliciously, though. Like he's said a few things like like the, the you're, you're not a, a leaf eater, are you comment? That was like, I don't think he meant it maliciously is the thing. I think it's more just not really considering how that comes along. <laughs> how it comes across. But uh, I do, I do, I am waiting for Wallace to redeem himself a bit more to me. But uh, I, I don't know. It's like, I'm I'm here like, I, I feel like he's a bit of an ass, but I feel like most of my favorite characters and things are usually a bit of an ass. <laughs> it's like the thing where like, my my favorite female characters tend to be just like absolute rays of sunshine, just lovely and sweet and amazing. And then my favorite male characters in media are just really morally ambiguous, questionable behavior kind of guys. So may maybe I'll end up loving him by the end of this. We will see. And then we've got Caprice. Caprice is incredible and I love her. And I'm pretty sure she's one of the like the main characters in twofold so i'm i i, I feel like i've 
I've seen I've seen the art for twofold. I've seen the characters in twofold. I'm pretty sure Caprice is like one of the main characters. So I'm this is like Caprice origin story backstory as well, which I'm excited about. And we've got Allison as well, who is just she's so sweet. She needs a backbone. I I'm really proud that she's slowly gaining that backbone, but she is so conflict avoidant and I I like I can't even be mad because I used to be the exact same way. <laughs> She reminds me of myself like six years ago. And that's why I'm just sat here like, no, please, you gotta speak up. You gotta speak up, girly, please. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this so, so much so far, though. The, the whole cast is so great. <laughs> Caprice, your beloved. She's so good. She's so great. They're all so great, honestly. Like, even th even though I'm, like, being a little bit mean about Wallace, he's still great, too. I've <laughs> I love the dynamics between them. And I also really, really love whenever media shows that guys and girls can be really close without dating. Like, it's... It's like the the most like bare minimum thing, but it makes me so happy to see it every time I see it. Because <laughs> there's so many things where it's just like, oh, this guy and this girl are best friends. They are going to date and get married. And it's like, well, some sometimes you you just have friends. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you don't want to date everybody you know. <laughs> so I really love that there's that dynamic there. I love that a lot. Oh, thank you for the head fat as well, wannabe weeb. Well, let's actually click and start act two. I'm excited. <sighs> All right, everyone out. Caprice and I step out onto the busy sidewalk per Eileen's orders. The chatty girl leaning through the passenger door as Eileen tries to get the car going again. Oh no. Giving a long stretch to help my stiff back, I do my best to keep out of the way. Wait, but maybe she'll be able to help with Rose's knowledge. After news of Eileen's owning a car leaked out, Caprice's mind immediately set about organizing the art club's first outing. Inspiration for our art, she called it, but it was obviously an excuse to hang out. <laughs> with things having gone this awry, I feel a little bad for going along with the idea, despite Eileen's reluctance. You know what? I'm gonna have a big stretch as well. Ha. Uh oh. Their investigation's apparently coming to nothing. Caprice writes herself as the car falls silent. Eileen closes the door behind her with some force before plodding around to us, frustration written all over her face. Looks like the engine won't idle at all. Serves me right for buying second hand. Hmm. Know why it's not working? No. No idea. <laughs> Let's caprice again. Is she always wearing a hat in twofold then? Does she always have a hat on in twofold? <laughs> I can't wait to actually play twofold. I'm so excited for it. This game looks beautiful, by the way, doesn't it? It is so gorgeous. Like, the styling is so good. The art is so good. The the user interface is so good. I love the scrapbook style of everything. I love the snow. It is... It creates such a great atmosphere. This game is so good. Oh, and thank you for the luck. Thank you for the work luck. Welcome, welcome. Enjoy the lovely game. I will. I'm I'm already enjoying it. I love it so much. It's so good. It's so nice. It's one of the things that I really love about all of the Studio Elan visual, visual novels. All of them have, they're so stylistically good. The, the, the styling is just so good. Like thematically, everything always works so well. They're, they're gorgeous. They're all gorgeous. Yeah, wait, I wanna, I wanna double check who, who does the art. Who's the artist? Where is 
No, I found the voice cast. Where is the... The... I must find... Who does the art? I must find... I could probably just check the credits in the game. But that would involve, like, checking the credits in the game. Ba -ba -ba. I can't find it. No. No, please. Whenever there's visual novels, I'm just like, please, please make the dev team really, really obvious everywhere. Put the names everywhere. You deserve the recognition for it. Don't. Ah. <laughs> uh... Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's like I know I know who's involved in the dev team, but I don't know what roles everybody played. <laughs> That's the thing. Oh, I'll have to look it up afterwards. Unless somebody else wants to look it up for me, which I would be very, very grateful for. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you! Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I just realized as well, um, my, my stream chat is still delayed from when I played out a while so I'm gonna <laughs> very quickly fix that before we continue because I, I usually have like a little bit of delay for chat but I, I always make it a little bit higher for outer wilds because that game is so easy to spoil and it means that my mods can catch things before I see them <laughs> but uh it's I forgot to change it back because I've been very sleepy Ba, ba, ba. Let me quickly change this back. <laughs> Sorry, professional streamer, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing at all times, honest. Ba, ba, okay, I think I might have to refresh the overlay. Let's try this. There we go. Let me double check the delay now. Okay, there we go. Yeah, the, the delay is not as long now. That's <laughs> that's how it should be. That's how it should be. I, d I don't want like a five second delay on everything. There we go, that's better. Yay! Okay. Okay, this is all stuff that I really should have done before stream, but um, I I didn't sleep last night because Tiffany Tiffany suddenly decided that at 20 to 3 in the morning was the perfect time for snuggles and affection and to nuzzle up against me and purr in my ear for an hour. She was, she was purring for an hour straight last night. <laughs> so I didn't get much sleep. It's okay though. Okay, back back to the car trouble, I guess. <laughs> Mother, I crave attention. I know it was it was so cute. She was being adorable. But I was like, Tiffany, why can't you do this in the day when I'm awake and available instead of waiting until I'm trying to sleep? <laughs> because cat, I guess that's why. Anyway, what what is wrong with the car? Uh, she looks a little sheepish for not having the answer on hand, but I can't say I blame her. As the two of us mull over our options, we become distracted by Caprice and her wide grin. She has a plan cooked up already, for better or worse. Oh no, what's this gonna be? <laughs> Caprice? What are you smiling about now? I've got this! Just stay right here, I gotta make a call. Catch you later! Oh, off she goes. <laughs> Do you need to change the spark plug? That's like, I, I know nothing about cars. I know that a spark plug is a thing in a car, but I know nothing else. I know I know you have to change the oil. You have to make sure there's oil. Um, what else do I know about cars? Uh, I know it needs fuel. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know anything. 
Yeah, and you're here knowing the vehicle model, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, I, I love how you're just immediately here like, well, yes, it makes sense. It makes sense that there's a, a Toyota Lexus breaking down. <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't know anything about cars. I don't know how to drive. Um, I've I've attempted to drive a car exactly one time. Um, it didn't go well. I have not tried since. I don't know how to drive. <laughs> but uh, thankfully, that's that's one thing. That's one thing that people are always surprised about. That I am quite old and I don't know how to drive. But the thing is, it's not as necessary in the UK as it is like in the US like I feel in the US it's kind of expected for you to learn how to drive because the USA is so big and everything is so spaced out and you 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 need to drive really but yeah over in the UK there's a lot of public transport there are buses just everywhere sometimes you'll have to change a few you'll like you'll have to get one and then get off at a stop to get another one but you can usually get anywhere you need to so long as it's not in the middle of the the wilderness countryside <laughs> but yeah I've, I've never had to learn how to drive because i've uh one public transport systems and two uh what is what is touching grass what is leaving the house i'm i'm simply a cat girl on the internet i don't go outside <laughs> uh, oh i have done go-karting before though I was pretty good with go-karting. I lie. I have got a driving license. I got a driving license from Legoland for driving a Lego car. I, I passed my license twice. I, I got two Lego driving licenses. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't, know, I don't know anything about cars. I'm just like, what, do, what parts of a car do I know? I know they have wheels. There's the, the windshield, there's windshield wipers, uh, wing mirrors, a mirror in the middle. Uh, yeah, let's, let's keep playing. <laughs> we should have more Lego cars on the roads. We, sh we should, definitely. Yeah, Eileen and I grimace at each other in unison, but Caprice bounces off down the street before either of us can object. Getting the phone from her pocket as she walks, she flits between the people around her while unbothered by the ice on the sidewalk. Oh my goodness, be careful, please. Please be careful. The background hum of people chatting and cars passing by takes over once again, as we find ourselves at loose ends. Hmm. Not like we could go anywhere else anyway. You're not going to try and stop her? <sighs> Think she'd listen to me if I tried? That's true. That's a fair point. Both of them are rather stubborn, so I suppose it's inevitable they'd clash sometimes. Yes, um, unstoppable object meets immovable force. Oh, uh, no, Im immovable, uh, unstoppable force meets immovable object. <laughs> I got that wrong. <laughs> immovable force just doesn't do anything. Good times. Uh, I'm gonna have some more monsters. Off to the most grand of starts. Oh, you have an uncle who owns an auto shop. Ah. Interesting. Ba ba ba. I'm I I'm trying to think of things comparable to me. I'm like, I'm I have I have a mother who used to work admin for a pharmacy. So I know lots of pharmaceutical drug names. <laughs> Not quite as cool. Maybe a little bit cool. I don't know. Oh, your dad owns a paint shop for bikes. Oh, oh, just like a paint shop in general. That's cool. That's really cool. See, the thing is, if I ever did learn how to drive and I got a car, I'd probably have to have a pink car. It, it, it would it would just have to be pink. I would I would have to have a pink car. If it was not pink, I would have to like get it painted pink. And that would probably be a big undertaking. So that's another reason why I don't know how to drive. It's... That's not actually a reason, but... <laughs> right. What is Caprice planning here? I'm a little worried. I feel like she's just 
gonna like come back with one of those scooters that has the little pods at the side that you can drive along with. <laughs> On the bright side, of all the places to break down, here isn't so bad. The weather's not too chilly and it's nice to observe people sometimes. Especially when they're bundled up in cute winter outfits. Oh my goodness, yes, winter fashion. My favorite. I love winter fashion. I love when it gets cold and it's winter because I can actually wear cute cardigans and jumpers and stuff. <laughs> Otherwise I overheat. I need it to be super cold. Also, Kura Syllabus, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on in. We've not gotten very far. We were talking about cats and cars and driving. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Some city workers in the distance are already beginning to set up the downtown Christmas tree, providing some entertainment for the people walking by as they struggle with the unwieldy, unwieldy thing. <laughs> Cats, the cat at the bottom right, that, that's me. Hi. That's me, I'm the cat. What if I, what if I add a Tiffany PNG? What if I hold Tiffany for this stream? That would be cute. <laughs> I'm going through my PNGs and I forgot I made a transparent PNG of a chocolate chip brioche roll last week. <laughs> oh, I don't have any brioche this week, unfortunately. I actually... We ordered some in the grocery delivery and they substituted the milk chocolate chip brioche rolls I like for a different brand. And I tried eating it and... I can't eat it. It's so savory. Like, it's... It's too savory to have chocolate chips in and taste nice, in my humble opinion. It was so sad. I really wanted a brioche and <laughs> I haven't been able to eat them. Wait, Tiffany text-to-speech? Oh my goodness, what if... What if I just recorded a bunch of meows that, of Tiffany? To, like, I just chase her around for a day recording her squeaks and her meows and I, I make, like, a a silly voice bank, so any message is read as Tiffany screams. <laughs> I would love to do that. It would be so much work, but I would love to do that. Alright, what Tiffany's do I have? Oh, I've got, like, emoji Tiffany. I can just... I can just stick the emote on my head. I can do that. Let's do that. Oh. There we go. Hee <laughs> hee. I now have a tiffy on my head. <laughs> there she is! Look! Oh, I should make it a little bigger. Try and make it match the ones on the screen. That's about the right size, right? It's... Yeah, that'll do. There we go. <laughs> Yay! I have a tiffy on my head. Perfect. No, maybe I should hold the Tiffy. I hold her. <laughs> add the Black Cat Life 2D model that comes with VTube Studio. I could do. Oh, actually, it looks a bit... Oh, I could have... Wait, I could have a Tiffany necklace. I've got a Tiffany necklace. Okay, okay, she's my necklace now. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry for getting distracted so much. I, I, I know I, I don't really need to apologize because I think if anyone was here for the gameplay, they would, they will have played the game themselves at this point because of how long it's taking me. <laughs> but I, I still like every time I, I get distracted, I'm just like, I'm so sorry. Especially because I want to play the game too. I, I want to play more of it. Let's get back to it. Ba 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 ba. Things will change as last minute Christmas shoppers and sale hunters start rushing around. But right now, it's a pleasant atmosphere. Turning back to Eileen, she doesn't seem as content to patiently pass the time people watching as I am. I'm going to go grab a coffee. Want one? I'm fine. Probably having a bit too much of it lately. There's no such thing as too much. 
As I shake my head at her offer, Eileen simply shrugs and begins strolling down the road in the opposite direction to Caprice. Rather than dance around the crowd, people make way for Eileen as she moves, her gaze fixed and noticeably taller than most. With little to do now but watch the car, I huff into my gloved hands a couple of times to try and warm them. At least the aquarium should be warmer if we ever manage to finish the trip there. Oh, I love aquariums. I love aquariums. Ah, oh, I really love aquariums. I like this ringtone. Just as I'm about to settle in and watch the passing crowds, the phone in my pocket begins to vibrate and ring. Not sure who it could be, I quickly grab for it. Dad. Without a second thought, I swipe my finger on the screen to pick up the call. Hi. Dad, hi. Hey, sweetie. It's good to hear your voice again. How are things? The sound of the crowds fades away as I listen to him, a comfortable warmth coming over me as I feel insulated from their gazes and focused on the conversation. Things are good, I guess. I haven't caught you at a bad time, have I? I could call back later. No, no, just out with friends. He gives his usual weird laugh, sounding more like air moving through closed teeth than a normal full-bellied chuckle. It never fails to make me smile all the same, though. What kind of laugh? Like... <laughs> I, oh, no, it's... Yes, it's that kind of laugh. It's like a... <laughs> that kind of laugh. Okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? Just a relief to hear that. We've all been worried about you finding new schools after such a big... Uh, but finding new friends after such a big change. What with changing schools and moving out? Thinking back to the people I've met in school, I guess I really have. Caprice pulled me into her orbit. Wallace seems nice and caring for all, for all his intimidating size. And then there's Eileen. They might be a bit odd, but they're all caring in their own ways. It's funny how art seems to have drawn us all together, each in a, <laughs> drawn, drawn us all together. <laughs> each in a different way. Before I respond, I vaguely hear my mother's voice in the background. Your mother said to ask if things are going okay at home. I didn't mean to pause. I, I keep accidentally pausing. I don't know how I'm doing this. Am I clicking like a specific spot on the screen? To make that happen? Huh. Everything's good. Rose has been a big help with everything. That's vastly understating things. If it weren't for her, I don't know how I would have coped. Not just for the constant housework and errands, but... Also for being away from home and everything I knew before. I might still have my ups and downs, but the last thing I want to do is stress them out over me. That's good to hear. Hopefully it'll take a bit of stress off a, a certain someone. Tell Rose hello for you. For uh, uh, <laughs> Let me try that again. Tell Rose hello for us, if you remember. Sure thing. Can do. How's everyone there? Your brothers are a pain in the ass like always, for one. Right on cue, one of them loudly complains in the background. As you can tell. How's Lucy? Same as always, she's sleeping in the other room, pet? I hear my mother's voice again in the background. Ah, right. She knocked a mug off the counter the other day. Your mom gave her a good scolding. I think she's acting out without you around. Okay, cat then. <laughs> oh, I guess maybe because of the, the cat charm. There is a cat back home. Oh, you're going to uni in a few months and this is hitting harder now. Oh, oh yeah, there's there's a lot of relatable feelings in this. Like, I haven't even gotten that, like, super, super far in it yet. And there have already been so many moments where it's just like, ooh, oh, that's real. That, <laughs> that hits. <laughs> that hits a bit hard. I can't help but laugh imagining it. My mom exasperated with my cat. Yeah, I do it. I was just like, oh, pet, knocked a mug off a counter. Yeah, that's a cat. <laughs> anyway, we're getting by. It ain't the same without you, though. In a whispered voice, he continues. 
It's hard to get a moment's peace around here. Make sure to give your mother a call sometime, okay? I'll call her, don't worry. a girl. Anything worrying you? On your mind? No, things are good. I realize my mistake the moment I answer, having spoken just a little too quickly to make it seem natural. My mind starts to replay embarrassing situations I've been in, the constant concerns and worries of living alone, the loneliness. Dad's calming voice cuts through, interrupting my spiraling thoughts. I'd better let you get back to your friends. I hope I'm not keeping you away. I'm f it's fine. I'm just happy to hear from you again. Oh, I'm just happy to hear you again. We miss you too. Christmas around here will be a lot warmer once you're back for the holidays. We're going to miss you at Nana's this year. Oh, I guess this might be Thanksgiving. She's going to miss Thanksgiving, maybe. I really can't wait to see all of you again. Also, Timothy, hello. Good morning. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to comfy, cozy visual novel times with half a brain cell. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it, too. I love you, Allison. Take care. I love you, too. Bye. Oh. <laughs> a few seconds pass before the familiar beeping of the ended call tone rings in my ear. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Putting away the phone, I feel like I should be happy to have spoken to my family again. That couldn't be any further from what I feel, though. The horrible lump in my throat only gets worse as I stare down glumly at the dirty snow on the sidewalk. Yeah, loneliness is hard. There, there are... Uh, loneliness is such a, a, a theme that really hits me. Because I, I don't know, I'm, I've always lived at home. Like I've, I've always lived with my mum, and now I live with my brother too since he moved back after uni, and I, I feel like I take so much of that for granted. Like sometimes I do wish I had like a moment to myself. I, I do wish I had the house to myself sometimes. <laughs> it feels like there's always somebody around, but I. I don't think I'd be the kind of person to do well living on my own. I don't think I would cope well with it. Like, I'm mostly an introvert, but I also really crave, like, physical contact. Like, I hug my mum all the time. <laughs> we have hugs all the time. It's like, she's she's gone away on holiday at the moment, and I can already feel the lack of hugs getting to me. I think I'm going to hug Xander later. He's probably going to be like, um, okay, a little confused, but I'm, I'm, I'm a very huggy person. Very specifically just with people I, I really like. Like, I, I don't like hugging strangers. I feel really awkward, but I, I really like hugs. <laughs> but yeah, it's like w with my mum being away, it's like, I'm really happy. She's, she's off on holiday. She deserves to relax and have a break. And it's also fun, me and Xander, like having the house to ourselves too, and just moving the, the sofa to the middle of the room to watch TV. <laughs> but, uh, but at the same time, I'm always just like, I miss my mum. I love my mum. My lovely mumsy. <laughs> right, let us continue. Oh, my heart hurts. Oh, no. The taste of my mother's food, my old bedroom, all the friends I left behind when I went to this college, my cat, they all come flooding back. That's that's another thing too. I I would not be able to go anywhere without Tiffany. I I just straight up would not be able to leave Tiffany behind. I would not be able to move out and leave Tiffany behind. Like t Tiffany is we're a package deal. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to to leave her behind anywhere. It's just homesickness. I've dealt with this before, and more than once. The fact it'll pass doesn't help right now, though. <laughs> that's... That's also so relatable, too. Oh, oh, why is it so real? Oh, uh, it's like, the, there's one thing, like, it's so annoying when you feel bad and you recognize that it's your brain making you feel bad for no reason but you still can't do anything about it 
even though you like consciously know it, the brain still makes you feel bad. <laughs> It's the worst. It's like, it. I always like when I feel sad for a reason, because I know the reason behind it, and I know that it can get fixed. Like, when it's just random sadness out of nowhere, that, that, that just sucks. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> ha. Noticing Eileen through the crowd, coffee cup in hand as she sips away, I take a long breath and try to steady myself. I don't want to look weird in front of her, getting all sulky in the middle of the street. Yeah, but... It gotta look good for your crush. <laughs> that was quick. Hey, the cavalry's here too. She jerks her head towards the top of the street in answer to my confusion. What's that? What's happening? <gasps> Caprice frantically waves to flag someone down, their little car sliding into a parking spot not far from where Eileen's ended up. It looks well cared for despite its age. All Eileen and I can do is stare at the at the uh, stare as the driver opens the door and steps out. I'm more than a little surprised when I recognize her as being another student from college. I'm also a little surprised as I recognize her as being a character in Too Far. <laughs> I'm I'm like I've I've seen the promotional art. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. She looks to be about our age, despite her ladylike appearance, her tall figure dressed in a smart trench coat and scarf. It's quite a fashionable look, and hardly who I expected to, al to arrive. As Caprice excitedly chats to her, I feel myself shrinking behind Eileen a little out of shyness. She looks much more apathetic about the whole affair, simply taking a long sip of her coffee. Getting on Eileen's good side made me forget how unsociable she could be. <laughs> Ta-da! Found a mechanic right nearby! A mechanic? Hello! I feel a little sheepish for assuming the worst of her little mission. Caprice seems to be very friendly with the woman, but it's hard to read much into that given Caprice's personality. <laughs> I think she's just friendly with everyone. Hi, I'm Millie. The two of us are roommates. <gasps> and they were roommates. Nice. Mechanic might be stretching things a bit far, but I should be able to help. I love her already. I love her already. I I feel like she's hitting all of the character archetypes that I really like. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Millie. And now, Millie... It's time for you to meet da, 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 my art club. Introducing Eileen and Allison. <laughs> I love the dramatic fanfare build-up, and it's just gonna be Eileen scowling and Allison hiding. <laughs> the most magnificent club. Also, S, hello. Wait, it's voice acted now. Yes, it, they, they've added a voice acting patch. Uh, it's not fully voice acted, it's just like special scenes, I think. But yeah, they, they did a they did a voice acting patch. It's definitely the reason why I waited so long to play it, not just because I ran out of time. <laughs> but hi! It's exactly it. I'm 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 the meme. I'm that meme, like I've I've only known Millie for two minutes. <laughs> All I can do is give a weak smile as Eileen snorts in weary disapproval. Like it or not, it looks like we're part of this misadventure for good. I could have sworn there was already an art club. The yeah, don't don't worry about it. <laughs> that one is garbage. <laughs> Mine is the cool art club. <laughs> I love that just like art club. The cool art club. So that's what you've been so happy about lately. Shame on me for thinking you were ever jealous of my position in the writing club. Ha <laughs> The art club and the writing club. Hee <laughs> hee. This is everything I know about Twofold. That's, <laughs> that's it. Right now, all of my, my knowledge of Twofold is, is used up now. Like, the writing club and the art club. Millie and Caprice. And also Olive? 
I know about Olive. I love them through like just passive everything I've seen about them. <laughs> but I don't know anything else about Twofold. <laughs> I'm so excited to play it. Really excited to play it. Oh, I played it a long time ago and then like weeks later the voice acting teaser announcement came out. Oh, oh the unfortunate timing. Oh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really excited to play Twofold. I'm so excited. I'm, it's, it's the main reason I wanted to play this and didn't want to wait until the end of the year to make it like thematically appropriate because I want to play this so I can start Twofold. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, oh, Black Walls the third. Hello, welcome. So true. Yeah, as it, it means you just get to play first snow again, right? <laughs> to enjoy all the new voice lines. Hehehe. <laughs> is that what all of this is about? Caprice wanted to be on level with her friend. I guess it worked out well for us, anyway. Yeah, second snow. <laughs> uh, so you're in charge of the writing club. The current leader's graduating at the end of this semester, so he's handing the reins to me. Ooh. Seems I made a good impression on him? Yeah, she... Ju just from first impressions, I would also trust her with leadership of a club. She seems very trustworthy. <laughs> and the rest of the club doesn't get a say? That's how it works. I like to call it a stable line of succession. Speaking of which, I need to get back to the writing I was doing before I got that phone call. It, your car had issues? Yep. Um, it's not going. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Engine died without any warning. Managed to coast it to the side of the road. Eileen doesn't seem exactly taken with the situation. Millie's explanation of her being a writer, not explaining her ability to fix a car. What are you talking about? That fully explains her ability to fix a car. Writers know everything. Writers look up everything. Writers know the, the most random solutions to things. Like, if, if you're ever trying to do like anything, ask a writer, they've probably read about it somewhere. <laughs> Also, my hello! You walk in and Millie's here! Yes, good timing. Good timing. Welcome, welcome. We don't have much option but to put our faith in her at this point. I'm guessing Caprice gave you the briefing. Need me around to start the thing? Ah. Oh, oh, let me! Eileen narrows her eyes but eventually sighs and chucks her keys at the girl. Caprice's momentary hesitation shows she expected that to work no more than I did. <laughs> yeah, I did not expect her to go with that. <laughs> Don't see a writer's search history. Exactly. Yeah, writers look up the most obscure pieces of info because they had to write like one scene about it at one point. Yeah, that's that's the that's that's the impression I always get. Man, I know so many writers. I have loads of writer friends. I've, I've dabbled in writing myself too, but I, I wouldn't consider myself a writer. I'm, I, I'm more of a like a, a story creator. I'm, I'm like a character creator, but I, I can't like make the stories to go around the characters. I just really like making characters for things. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I feel like I could be a writer if I fully invested my time and energy into it, but. I don't know. I don't think I have the time or energy for it. Like, I'm I'm not strong enough for that. <laughs> yes, it is I, the OC maker. The amount of original characters I have, I, I, I would love to just talk about them at some point. I, 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 I have so many original characters that I'm super attached to, but I don't have anything to like put them in. <laughs> They're just individual characters lost in the ether of my brain. But I really like character building. I think that's why I like tabletop roleplay stuff so much. I really love like the roleplay character creation world building aspect. And when I'm doing it with other people, like when other people are creating the world that I can just plop the character into, that's that's like my ideal. I love it. <laughs> ba ba ba. Okay, fine. Just 
Don't go for a drive or something. I assure you, you haven't seen me actually angry yet. The, serious of, the seriousness of her tone seems to penetrate a little. Of course, Caprice being Caprice, it doesn't take long for her to bounce back. <laughs> yeah, and then suddenly they Google things that honestly look so weird out of context, you can't help but be concerned until you realize it's Frodo's. <laughs> yeah, just be like, so that's... That's very interesting that you would have um, the search term on how to knock a person unconscious without killing them in your search history. Oh, hey, you ha you have a secret agent original character. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, for what it's worth, you'd absolutely watch a stream of me just introducing my OCs. <gasps> I appreciate that a lot. I like that a lot. Thank you. <laughs> I would, honestly, that could be so fun. It wouldn't have to be just my my fully original characters too. Like I could, I could introduce my characters for other things, like like my Final Fantasy fourteen characters and my Baldur's Gate three characters and stuff. I oh, that could be so fun. That could be so fun. Oh, just introduce them to everybody. Maybe, maybe I have to do that. Maybe I will have to do that now. And maybe having my OCs like out in the universe will inspire me to actually do something with them as well. Oh, that would be so fun. Because it wouldn't just have to be mine too. Like it could just be like an original character sharing stream because I love hearing about other people's characters. I really, really love it. And I feel like it would be so fun. I, oh, oh, I have to do that now, don't I? Oh, I'm gonna have to start planning that. That sounds so fun. I gotta do that. I gotta do that. Also, Brindley, hello! Welcome, welcome. Welcome in. Oh, I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna plan a original character get to know everyone stream. With not just mine, but other people's characters. Just be like, hey, you've got a character? Tell me about him, please. I wanna know everything. <laughs> I love it. Right, oh, speaking from experience. You had to Google how much a human head weighs for a Delanus. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That that really is a a terrifying thing to have in your search history out of context. <laughs> All right, back back to back to back to first snow though. Now then, let's fix this thing. Let's Woo! see what I can do. Right, let's have a look. She gives us a confident smile before popping the hood. Caprice taking on the job of her assistant. To Millie's credit, she looks like a natural as she quickly moves this and that around, uh, around about to peer inside. Oh, you'd love a stream like that. Oh, it feels like a lot of people would. Maybe I will have to do that. Oh, if you recall correctly, a human head is like the same weight as a bowling ball. Oh, that's... I feel like that's still a, a little arbitrary too, though, because you can get bowling balls that weigh different amounts. But uh, I, I feel like that would make sense, though. Imagining, like medium weight heavy weight bowling ball yeah yeah there's there's a lot of stuff in a human head anyway if you don't need us we'll just go for a short walk all right yeah got it oh we're going on a walk with eileen yes yes hold on i gotta sit up straight for this <laughs> <laughs> the meaning of we becomes clear as Eileen puts a hand around my shoulder to direct me, the two of us walking off beside each other and leaving the two to their work. <gasps> this is so pretty. Oh, this is so pretty. Ah, this is so pretty. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. Thank you for the hydrate. I will have a sip of my drink. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Ba -ba -ba, yeah. <laughs> now you have a, a mental image of bowling with a human head. Oh my goodness. New new horror game idea. New horror idea. <laughs> Maybe even like a zombie character who who goes bowling and is just like, I don't need a bowl, I got my own, just takes their head off casually. <laughs> Bowls it down the thing. Then and then they're just like 
having to wait for the machine to bring it back around. Like, I want my head back now. <laughs> also, Lyra, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, most bowling balls are lighter than you'd think. Yeah, around, around like 10 pounds. Yeah, around 11 pounds. Yeah, I, I, it's something I've never even thought about before. But now, now I feel like I have new knowledge. Ah, <laughs> oh, let's... Right, it's... Enough about bowling with zombie heads. Uh, it's time for a romantic walk in the park? Maybe? Maybe? Maybe I'm just gay? It feels a little weird to have Eileen's arm around my back and holding my shoulder as we walk side by side. Even if it is to guide me, she takes a long while to let go. Ooh. Um... You sure you're alright leaving them alone? Not at all. Not like I can do anything to actually help, though. All I can do is awkwardly laugh it off. I don't have the first clue on even day-to-day -day maintenance for a car, after all. So maybe just staying out of the supposed mechanic's way might be for the best. At least it broke the ice a bit, as I still feel a little unsure when I'm alone with her. I can never seem to get a read on Eileen. Every time we talk, I end up getting caught in her pace. Even now, I'm not sure why she pulled me away to walk with her. No, that's not quite true. She must have noticed me being depressed earlier, even if she isn't saying anything about it. Given how she also invited me over for dinner when I was hungry, it seems she really does care for me, despite her stoic exterior. Yeah, she's she's like... She's like a chocolate. She's got the, the hard outer shell, but she's all gooey and nice on the inside. <laughs> she's got the, the warm heart. As she drops her emptied coffee cup into a bin as we pass, I realize it's going to be up to me to raise the subject. Alison backbone time? <sighs> oh, she's... I'm so proud of her. So, you saw me earlier, huh? <sighs> you did look a bit bummed when you got off the phone. Didn't want to bring it up if you didn't, though. She left me no choice. Sorry. I miss talking to my family after so long. Sorry for being so flustered. Nothing to be sorry for, it's only natural. Huh? So, you're homesick, huh? Sometimes. Moving out for the first time's a big deal. You don't need to beat yourself up over feeling stressed. Thank you. Thanks. I thought I was doing okay, but when I heard my dad's voice again... It reminded you of what you're away from. I give a simple nod. She doesn't seem to be speaking in an overly soft or caring tone, but she is listening carefully. I appreciate it, really. She doesn't come off as patronizing. I can't imagine living alone. I have no idea how you do it. She gives an absent-minded shrug. I'm not really fussed about that sort of thing. Besides, Wallace drops by sometimes, and you're welcome as well. <gasps> she just said we're, she just invited us any time. But I feel like Alison being who she is, she will still not go without an explicit invitation. I am saying that because that is how I would be. <laughs> I'm I'm like I'm like a friendship like friendship vampire kind of. I'm like even even if you give like a vague yeah you can join me at any time, I will not join anything unless I am specifically invited. <laughs> I'm such a baby. It's always just like, hey, got open voice call on Discord. I will still just be like, hey, can I join? Is is it okay if I join maybe, even though you've already said I can? And Hikari, hello, good morning. I'm doing well, thank you. I hope you're doing well too. Welcome in. And Zarok, hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you for the drive-by care package. Let me have a big stretch. Oh, stretching my arms out feels good, actually. Whew. And a sip of my drink. And a welcome, welcome. 
I guess friendship vampire is not the best way of wording it. That sounds more like I, I drain friendship from people. I mean it more in like the sense of like, you know how a vampire has to be invited in? Like they can, you, you, you can like have a, a vampire on the threshold of a house, but if you don't explicitly invite them in, they won't go in. I'm, I'm like that, but with social situations. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times people are like, yeah, just just join whenever. I I still, I'm I'm still just a baby. I'm I'm like I need to be actively asked. <laughs> Hope I'm doing well. Yes, I I am doing well. I'm I didn't sleep much last night, but I, I'm waking up quickly thanks to the power of Monster Energy. <laughs> and also, this game is so good. It is so relatable in painful ways, but it's so good. I'm having so much fun with it. And that is true. Wallace is basically, like, always there. It's good that you have a roommate you get along with, though. That'd help. I get the feeling Eileen's circling around what she actually wants to say. As she looks to me, I think she realizes that the game is up. The two of us stopping as she turns in front of me. Please, please just, like, actively invite me to your place. Please? Maybe? Is that what this is gonna be? Allison. Oh, oh. Oh, she, oh. She's so nice. She may seem scary. She may seem scary and intimidating, but she's so nice. I love Eileen. Ah, oh, for you, you call that your autism. That is very fair, yes. <laughs> I am I am the same. I'm like, please, um, please don't say things vaguely. Please just be very specific. Because otherwise I will absolutely overread things. And oh, the amount of times, like, honestly, just just as like a general thing too. It's not like even like a like an autism neurotypical kind of thing. I really wish people would not say one thing when they actually mean something else. Like I, I can't think of, like, a specific example right now, but I can think of, like, there have been situations in the past where someone has said something, and I have gone, oh, okay, uh, thanks for letting me know, and then they've gotten mad at me because they actually meant something else, and I was meant to do something, and I'm like, well, you you never asked me to do anything, so, um, what? <laughs> so why are you mad? Why are you mad when you literally never even ask? It's like, It's, oh, uh, just, just little things I think of. It's, yeah, I can't think of any, like, active examples, which is painful. But I, I know, I, I know there's, there have been situations. Like, I'm the kind of person where I just, I, I really like having clear instructions for things. Like, if things are vague, I end up second guessing what is asked of me, and I proceed to not do anything. <laughs> like, like, if, if I've got vague instructions on how to do something, I'll be like, okay, but this doesn't clarify if I should do it this way, this way, or this way. And then I will look up all three ways, and I still won't know exactly what is wanted of me, so I will just not do it. <laughs> yeah, run on commands. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it, it makes me very happy that... Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I just feel like communication is really important and also like if there is a miscommunication as well it's really important to not just like get mad and defensive like if you can just explain just be like hey uh actually i'm upset because i meant this and you didn't do it and then i'll be like oh i'm so sorry you didn't clarify that which is why i didn't do it then to to then be like well i'm still mad at you because i didn't tell you what to do and you didn't do it like that's like Take it as a learning moment. Just be like, okay, I'm sorry. I, I will tell you more clearly in the future. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it is an easy problem to make. Like, it's so easy to think that something is obvious. Like, if it's obvious to you, you might not even think to clarify. But it might not be obvious to somebody else. It's, it's, it's very easy. It's very easy to miscommunicate. Communication is hard. And it's taken me a long time to get decent at it. 
man, I, I I think of myself from like six years ago, and I I was so bad at communication. I was really I was really avoidant. Like if someone upset me, I wouldn't tell them until they upset me like twenty times, and then it would boil up to an unreasonable amount. And I would tell them I was mad, and they'll be like, well, you have no reason to be this mad over this one small thing. Without them realizing it was like 20 things. So <laughs> I was I was really bad at communication. It's, it's, it's a really difficult skill to learn, honestly. But it, it makes me happy that it's, uh, I've, I've gotten much better at it now. Uh, I don't bottle, bottle things in anymore. Sometimes I will keep things to myself a little longer than I probably should. But I'm much better now at, like, approaching people and being like, Hey, just wanted to let you know, please don't do that thing again. <laughs> we're all freshmen here. You, me, Caprice. We're all away from our families and trying to find our niche. If you want to talk or vent, we're around. Wallace told me you talked, so you have that big oaf as well. That's it, I guess. Oh, that's really sweet of her. I might have thought I didn't want to worry her, but her reassurances are more comforting than I'd guessed they'd be. Even as I manage to gather myself, I can't help but smile. I know it's a little selfish, but it's sort of nice to have someone worried over me. <laughs> to my surprise, she brings her hand to my head and starts ruffling my hair. <gasps> oh my goodness, head pats. <sighs> head pats from Eileen. Oh my, oh, oh my goodness. Naomi, hello! You're horrible with that. You have a lot of minor communication ticks that just annoy you slightly until you just get incredibly frustrated. Oh, yeah, it's... It's also difficult as well, though, because... Oh, I also get head pats. Oh my goodness, thank you. Ruffle up my hair? Hold on. My hair has been ruffled up. Thank you. <laughs> I love I love that little knowing grin on her face. She knows exactly what she's doing here. But uh, I think it's also hard, like, sometimes you don't even realize that something bothers you until it gets to that frustration point. And then you're like, wait, actually, I don't like this thing. <laughs> That's one thing with me, like, I don't like people being jokingly mean to me. Like, it's the kind of thing where I'm okay with, like, one or two comments and then back to being nice. But I feel like the kind of people who are jokingly mean keep going with it like it, it's just like a common thing and like it's not meant to be malicious like it's just the way people get along sometimes like a lot of people insult each other all the time in a friendly way and that's like how they show their affection but for me I'm like I'm okay with it to like a certain extent and then it starts like actually upsetting me <laughs> so that that's when I'm always like uh hey can we can we tone down the the meanness please can, can you please be nice yeah, and that is why you're always allowed to retract your consent. Exactly, yeah. It's like, it's something that I always make clear as well. I'm like, you can you can be jokingly mean to me. I'm okay with it. But if I if I start going, can we be nice now, please? Can we be can we be friends now, please? That is like my my subtle signal that I'm getting sad. Please don't be mean. <laughs> please be nice to the cat girl. <laughs> Believe the cat girl, no! Although, is it really bullying if you're throwing nice things at me? It's all nice things that are being thrown at me. I'm okay with you throwing things at my head. That is, that's not bullying. That's, that's kindness. Like that! Like that! You're, you're making sure I'm fueled. Thank you for the hydrate, Brindley. <laughs> Have a sippy of my drink. But yeah, it's something I make very clear. And it's also something that I, like, when I'm meeting people and getting to know people, I usually do just say, please just don't make, like, mean jokes to me. Like, just as, like, a, a flat-out thing. Because it's easier to just, like, draw that boundary than to, like, let a little bit happen and then draw the boundary. I, I, I feel way safer, like, having the line already there. <laughs> But yeah. Oh, thank you for the posture check as well, and for pouring dice on my head. I've got so many dice. Oh, big stretch. Big stretch. Big stretch. Oh, your sister used to do that, but you think she was just looking for an excuse to throw things at you? No! She'd throw chocolates at your face when you entered a room, and you'd just be like, oh, chocolate. 
I would also be the same. It's also something Xander does to me a lot as well, but he only, like, throws plushies at me. <laughs> or, like, he'll threaten to throw something at me, but he won't actually do it. And I'll just be like, do it. Do it, you coward. <laughs> yeah, mean jokes just end up kind of being a hard line for you. Yeah, like, you can deal with it, but you're not going to hang around for longer than you need to. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like I said, like, everyone has, like, different different things they're comfortable with and yeah I'm, I'm the kind of person where I every time I try and be jokingly mean to somebody I will then like message them a second later and just be like I'm so sorry if that comment was mean I didn't mean it to be mean it was a joke I'm so sorry like <laughs> get a response back just like I, kn I know it was I could tell it was a joke silly silly Leary don't worry <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just not very good at being mean. The only person that I can be mean to without feeling bad is Xander. And I think that's because I've known him my entire life. Or well, his entire life. Not my entire life. <laughs> I'm the older sibling. <laughs> but yeah, I it's it's always like me and Xander are always jokingly mean to each other because we know it's all jokes and we've known each other for so long. But it's also kind of gotten to the point now where we'll just be like, you're you're such a you're such a, a stupid nerd. And we'll just thank each other. Just be like, you are such a nerd. What the hell? What are you doing? That is so stupid. And I'll be like, thank you. Lyrio Good times love. indeed. And oh my goodness! Thank Mook, hello! Thank you for the resub for 12 months. It's the year mark. You've got the year one now. You have the year sub, the hearts filled in. Hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome. No, just feel I meant every second of it. Just say like the most completely out of pocket thing and just be like, no, I'm, I am I mean all of it. I couldn't do that. I would not be able to. But yeah, yeah, it's like, it's it's the sibling bond. It's the sibling bond. There are also some of my friends as well. Like, my really close friends who I've known for years and years. Like, I feel comfortable, like, insulting them, too. But uh, a lot of the time with that, it's it's still, like, more jokingly. Like, it'll be like, why did you do that? You're so silly. You're so silly. You're having a silly moment. <laughs> and it's good times. But yeah, I'm, I'm really lucky. I get along so well with Xander. It's like, we're not just siblings. Like, he's he's a really good friend to me as well. And we've gotten so, so lucky. We have so much in common. We like, like, the same kind of music. We like the same kind of media. We, we're we both interested in, like, the same kind of things. We really, we really lucked out in the, the sibling lottery. We get along so well. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. Do you think the important part is intent? Yeah, that's exactly it. It's... There's always, like, a little bit of a shaky line there if you don't know someone super well. There's always, like, that little bit of doubt, like, I'm pretty sure they're joking, but it's possible they couldn't be. And that's the bit I always worry about. I am a notorious overthinker, and I worry about everything. So I like to take the worrisome things out of the equation. <laughs> right, back to this. I got so distracted by head pads. <laughs> We just got head pads from Eileen. Oh, I'm I'm loving playing this too because it's it's the exact same situation that I ended up in with Please Be Happy. That game took me to so long to finish because things kept being brought up in the game that are just such good conversation topics to talk about. Like it's just so nice to have like the deep chat just to talk about like feelings and communication and relationships not even r romantic relationships just all relationships and i love it that's that, that's why i play these games i love it i love it so much <laughs> uh yep she brings her hand to my head and starts ruffling my hair it's hard to read her expression as she does so but i don't feel put off at all quite the opposite she pauses for a moment face stuck Sorry, if you don't. It's fine. <laughs> I only just managed to splutter the words out. My dumb smile better at getting the message across. 
I love the thought of her just doing like an instinctive head pat and then just being like, oh, wait, what if what if you don't like? Oh, oh, you like it. That's fine. Got the smile again. I love this smile. I love this smile. Taking the cue, she begins petting my head once more. I forgot how much I missed simple physical interaction, as awkward as she might be about it. A hug might be a bit more normal, but somehow it's hard to imagine Eileen doing that. Uh, it's not a secret I'm not great at this kind of thing. Just keep what I said in mind, alright? I will. Everyone's here to help me, I'll remember that. Removing her hand, Eileen and I start heading back towards the car side by side. I feel like I'm about to sneeze. I sneezed. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, that was awful. That was horrible. That, that... Do you ever get the kind of sneeze where you feel it building up and then you feel it going again and you're like, no, this sneeze is not going to happen. I had that and I thought the sneeze was going to go again, but then I actually managed to sneeze and I'm, I'm so glad. Oh, oh, thank god. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Hi. Hi, sorry about that. Also, the, the people who clip people sneezing. You don't get a pre-sneeze from me, sorry. <laughs> Bless me, thank you. <laughs> but, oh, you've been getting that a lot lately. Oh, it's the worst feeling. It's, yeah, it's the worst feeling. It's like, it it feels so, ugh. you just You just want the sneeze to come out. You just want the sneeze to happen so that it stops. Ah, there we go. There we go. Thankfully, I, I managed to, to have, like, the the sneeze relief. <laughs> right, Eileen and I start heading back towards the car, side by side. It's easy for someone who's outgoing to comfort another, but it feels somehow more sincere from a loner like Eileen. She's making an extra effort for my sake. Somehow, I feel a little warmer than I did before as we walk back. Maybe the weather's improved, but I doubt that's it. Hmm. I guess you've had experience living alone, haven't you? Huh? Me? Just moved out of college, same as you. So we're in just the same situation, yet Eileen has everything so together that she can offer me help like this. Moreover, she's known so this entire time. I just sigh in defeat. Yeah, I'm, I'm not cool enough for her. <laughs> College has really driven home how everyone's different. Sure has. The reason for the dreariness in her voice becomes apparent as I follow her gaze. Caprice happily bouncing out of the car and shutting the door as we stroll up. Everyone sure is different. <gasps> Caps, hello! Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, hi! <laughs> welcome in time to say hi! Oh my goodness, welcome! Welcome on in. Thank you for stopping in. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It you. I, thank you so I, I'm enjoying it so much so far. I love this. I love this so much. I am already so enamored with this art club. I am so excited to play twofold. <laughs> but oh, I'm so glad you could stop in. Hello. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a hope you have a good morning. If if you're still waking up, that's completely fine. <laughs> But thank you, welcome. Right, do they fix it? Hey! Hey guys! The impromptu mechanic appears finished as well, writing herself and closing the hood after poking around inside. Did she fix it? Did she fix it? Oh, oh my goodness, tier two, 25 months. All of the months, that's so many months. That's more than two years now. Jack, thank you for the resub, happy. Do I have to say it like that? Happy Tuesday. Oh, it feels so it feels so wrong. Happy Tuesday. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the resub. How's it going? I hope she fixed it. If they're coming to get us, I would presume they maybe fixed it. 
She absentmindedly wiped the sweat off her forehead, leaving some grease on her face before realizing her error. Whoops. Well, it's fixed for now. Looks like the fuse went, nothing major. I've done what I can out here, but it needs a proper fix back at a shop. This'll get you going, though. Eileen's impressed look is shared by me. <laughs> Her impressed look, eh? <laughs> Being so handy is a good trait to have. And she did come all the way just to help us. Oh, she, she's got... <laughs> she is covered in grease. How has she managed to do this without getting any of it on her coat? I am so impressed. Like, the first thing I would do would be to wipe my hands on the coat. I would, I would have handprints all over this clean white coat. <laughs> <laughs> the blondes are communicating. Being so handy is a good trait to have, and she did come all the way here just to help us. I'm impressed. Fixed cars before? <laughs> I was about to recommend taking it to my dad's auto shop, actually. That's how she got the knowledge. I see. I see. She has incredible restraint until she wipes the sweat from her brow. Honestly, it's probably more the fact that she just had her hands inside the car the whole time. Until now. Sure. Your dad's shop is as good as any other. I'll sort something out this afternoon. This is where I'd shake your hand in thanks, but... You know... Millie gives a self-deprecating smile in response. Caprice passes her a handkerchief from her pocket, which Millie quickly uses to wipe her hands as best she can. But she's going to forget to wipe her forehead, isn't she? <laughs> oh, Millie is definitely someone's exact type. It's you. She's your type. I see. Honestly, same though. Honestly, same. I'm playing this game is making me realize I don't really have a type with women because I'm like, they're, they're, they are, they're all my type. They're all so different, but they are all my type. <laughs> I don't have a type. I don't have a type. I just appreciate women. Hey, since you're already here, I'll let you all get on with your art club adventure. I have other things I need to do. Sorry. <laughs> you can tell they're roommates. She knows exactly how to deal with Caprice. Which is to say no before she can even get the question out. <laughs> Shut her down before she even starts. The, the only way to deal with a Caprice. Have fun. Thank you. With that, we give our farewells to Millie as she heads back towards her car. Her momentary churlish grin towards the deflated Caprice doesn't go unnoticed. Ah, <laughs> oh, brilliant. Eileen snatches her... Oh, a rivalry in the making. Meet the leader of the campus's writing club. I got an achievement. Eileen snatches her keys back from the girl's hand, wasting no time in addressing the both of us. Now, are we finally going to the aquarium? Yeah! Yeah! Yes, we're going. She beams brightly, her smile proving infectious. Turning to me, Eileen's emerald eyes stare into my own, checking my re reaction after the day's events. As rough as she might be, Eileen really does care about others. Eileen. Let's go, Eileen. The way Allison says Eileen is so tender. Oh, my heart. Hold on, sorry. My mic's started slipping. I need to... I need to adjust my mic stand a bit. It's gone a bit wonky. Oh, it's so creaky too. Oh no. I'm Ow. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Are you gonna stay? Okay, it's staying. <laughs> okay, fixed. <laughs> Let's go, Eileen. Oh, she said it so tenderly. I'm hold on, I wanna hear it again. Eileen. <laughs> With this, she gives one of those few smiles she dares give. Smile. It feels like a reward to see them, and I find myself wanting to see them more and more. Okay. And now we're back at school. Outside the, the, the room for our art club, which definitely was not claimed by force. I briefly wonder who's in the art room as I proceed along the second floor hallway. Well, less wonder and more hope. <laughs> Caprice will be there, I've little doubt of that, but 
I'm starting to enjoy being around Eileen. Her paintings are so nice to see, and any time I manage to make her warm to me feels somehow rewarding. Someone like Caprice smiles all the time, and the moment we sat beside, e beside each other in a biology lecture, my fate was sealed as she began chatting to me without prompting. While I don't mind that at all, finding her bubbly attitude uplifting, if a little overbearing, there's little about her that she keeps to herself. When Eileen gives praise, or even just smiles, it feels genuinely earned. I think that's the difference. Upon reaching the door and opening it, the otherwise empty room is filled with the greetings of a certain loud girl. Sitting at a table with a sketchbook in front of her, she takes a brief break from her work. Hi! Good afternoon, Alison! Hey. Hi. You look cheerful as usual. I'm super ready for today's art club meeting. She pumps her fist as I walk in, earning a, uh, earning a sincere if weary smile. I feel a little bad for my first reaction upon entering being disappointment, given her earnest state of friendship with me. Shrugging it off, I pile my books onto another table and take a couple of pencils from the side of the table which Caprice has commandeered. Ooh, nice still life. A glance at the sketchbook Caprice has been sketching in makes me stop in my tracks. I have to look up at her and back down again just to confirm that this was done by the same person. Her casual doodles were cute, but she has a real talent for this stuff now that I see her more serious work. What are you talking about? Doodles are serious. I'm a, I'm a serious doodler. <laughs> I never really questioned how much Caprice has practiced her art now that I think about it. I'm left a little chastened. Ch ch chast 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 chastened? Chastised. Ch chastened, is it? Hmm. For underestimating how much effort she puts into this hobby. <gasps> oh, that's. Oh! Motivated to try a bit harder myself, I take a seat and open one of my notebooks. Ripping to a mostly empty page, I ponder for a moment before settling about sketching a cat. They were always a favourite subject to doodle. This is so cute. This is so cute. Look at that. Look at the shading. I lose track of time as I start to get into it, trying to replicate Caprice's shading from memory. It's only when Caprice pipes up with another greeting that I take a break. Eileen strides through the doorway as I look up, giving a quick, perfunctory wave to the both of us. She looks barely awake, but given how tired she always looks, it's hard to say if it's any worse than usual. As we exchange greetings and Caprice gets back to her sketching, Eileen's eyes fall on my notebook. Oh, <laughs> can, you, can you give me some tips? Without breaking stride, she turns on the ball of her high boots to take a detour from her easel and peer at my work. Eileen's figure looms above as she stands in front of me, fingers pressed to the top of my sketchbook as she looks down. It conjures up feelings I haven't felt since middle school, as if a student shrinking before her teacher. A little intimidating. <laughs> I love that, yeah. I'm not much of an artist. Then she proceeds to render out the most detailed shading on a silly cat you've ever seen done with pencil. I know, it's... I... Although I feel like a lot of people who are good at art are also like that. I feel like I I am also like that. I'm I'm the kind of person where I, I don't call myself an artist because I definitely am lacking a lot of skills. But I'm also not bad. Like, I'm not terrible at art. Yet every time I do something, I'm just like, well, um, please, please be kind. I'm I'm not I'm I'm not good at art. <laughs> I don't know. I, it, it also doesn't help that I'm surrounded by loads of people who are incredible artists as well, though. <laughs> but it, it, I, 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 I've, I, I love it. I love the, the, the shading on the cat doodle. <laughs> it's also so good, the thought of, like, drawing a cat from memory without a reference. Like, I would not... I don't think I'd be able to. I would make a creature... It might be, like, vaguely cat-shaped, but I don't think it would fully be recognisable as a cat. <laughs> Just be a, 
a little creature. Just a little creature. Uh, Nugs, you're an artist who does it as a hobby. You're not a pro, but you're not bad either. You're amazing. Nugs, your art is so good. I I really love your art. You're a really good artist. But yeah, I guess there's maybe that like little aspect of like if you are exclusively a hobbyist, like maybe it's a bit harder to be like, yeah, I'm an artist. But yeah. But yeah, if you do art, you're an artist. It's... <laughs> And there are so many amazing artists who really, like, downplay their skills. And it's it's the kind of thing as well where it takes so much skill, too. It's like people talk about talent a lot when it comes to art. But I feel like talent kind of implies that it's like you kind of just have it. I like to say skill more because skill really, like, takes into account, like, the, the time and energy that's put into it. Like, every artist I know, like, they're not just born instantly knowing how to do things. There's, you need so much practice, even if you don't, like, actively learn anything. Like, if you don't, like, actively train, you're still constantly drawing and improving and learning from that. It's such a difficult skill to learn. And I feel like that skill is so important to recognize. Yeah, talent undermines your effort. Yeah, it's... It's something that, like, I wasn't really fully aware of it until someone else mentioned it to me. Who was it? Oh, I think it was Zal, actually. Zal. Uh, Zal's an incredible musician. He's really, really skilled. He's a really skilled musician. Singer, mixer. He's also someone who underplays his skills, too. He really downplays his skills. But he was the one who mentioned it. He's like, talent kind of negates all of the time and effort that's put into it so I always I, I feel like s saying someone is so skilled is like more of a compliment I don't know it's stuff to think about it's something I didn't really consider before because I I would just be like oh yeah you're so talented but it's like thinking deeper into the the meanings of the words it's, when you look into it it's yeah it's it it's not it's not all talent. Like, some people are naturally talented at some things. But it's the skill that, like, elevates that. Right, I'm... I'm, I'm I, I get... I get so distracted. I, I go off on so many tangents. <laughs> but, yeah, it's... It's, it's, a, it's a really difficult-to-acquire skill. And it's so impressive. Hmm. You haven't done this in a while, have you? Sorry. Sorry. No. <laughs> it's like, is it that obvious? Why are you apologizing? If you haven't, you haven't. You have the fundamentals right, at least, which only comes with practice. Her fingertip skates back and forth on the paper, pointing out this and that. Musculature looks off, but that's a pain at the best of times for animals. Try to draw from references instead of relying on what your mind thinks someone looks like. Uh, thinks something looks like. Yes. A weight feels as if it's been lifted from my shoulders. It's not exactly high praise, but the fact she's willing to give me pointers feels like validation. Yeah, oh, I feel like singers also do this a lot. Yeah. Yeah, this just I'm 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 like that too with singing. Like, I I feel like I'm a decent singer, but every time I listen back on myself, I'm like, well, I made a little mistake there. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, just like, oh, you're so good. Yeah, I'm. that's what I tend to do, too. I'm like, if, if I see, like, a piece of art that I really love, then I will say that. I'll say, I love this. This is great. It, this is so good. <laughs> it's the, 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 it's the best way to compliment something. Like, if something is good tell them it's good it's like the nicest thing to hear about something like if you've worked hard on something and someone is like i really like this this is great that is the best compliment you can get <laughs> all right <laughs> you like cats i have one back home explains it more of a dog person myself really Oh, really? But but she acts so much like a cat. <laughs> Ever had one? 
would have been nice, but my parents weren't interested in the idea. <clears throat> Sounds like you and your parents don't get along very well. No. We don't. The pet thing's nothing to do with it. They wanted me to go into one of their approved careers, and I didn't. Ooh, ill family expectations. Oh, I thought it would be something more complicated. Sometimes things really are as simple as they seem. I'm sure things will work out eventually. Ugh. That's nice. <laughs> oh, Allison, I know, I know what she's trying to do here, but... <laughs> I was so blasé. I open my mouth to respond, but the tone behind her words makes it clear that she considers this discussion over. The air goes cold between us, leaving me at a loss for words as my shoulders slump in defeat. All I meant to do was cheer her up. <laughs> yes. Not the best way to go about it. Oh, awkward. Uh, also has something to do with the skill of the listener, right? Yes! Someone who's been singing for years is more likely to notice mistakes or things they'd like to change. Yeah, same. Like, th the more I sing, the more I realize things. And, like, I realize, like, how much is, like, chest voice versus head voice. Like, I can feel the changes when I'm going from, like, ah, ah, and then I, I switch into, like, my head voice. Like, going into falsetto and... Like, learning the words for things as I go along as well is... It's, it all adds. It all adds to the, the skill set as you go along. Yeah, and professional chess players knowing what move to take as well. Like, the more you do it, the more you see what other people do, the more you learn how to react to different situations. Yeah, it's an acquired skill as you go along. It's... Skill. As she steps over to another table and pulls off her coat, Caprice gleefully fills the awful silence with her bubbly voice. Allie! <laughs> hey! Have you tried doing other stuff as well? Huh? What do you mean? You know, other kinds of art. There's oils, watercolour, pottery, fletching. <laughs> Are we going to whittle a duck? I would, I would be down to do that. I both paint and do sketch work, so it's not like you need to keep to one thing or another. I can get some pottery stuff if you want! Oh my... Oh my goodness, that... Um, I do kind of want to make a woobly pot now. Eileen barely restrains herself from rolling her eyes. <laughs> By harassing the poor professor into giving you some kiln time and clay. No! It's not harassment, it's negotiating. I think I'll be fine for now. <laughs> Eileen gives one final piece of advice as she turns towards the cupboard, taking advantage of the lull from Caprice focusing her own work. Don't worry about her, just keep at it. Practice might not make perfect, but it'll get you close. I'm sure Eileen means well with her efforts at teaching, but it's a vast change to the way I used to draw as a kid and in high school, being little more than the occasional scribble when an idea struck. Barely having time to put pencil to paper, a clatter at the front of the room draws the attention of both Caprice and I. As Eileen fiddles, both of us get up to see what's happening. Kirklander, hello! Welcome, welcome! Good morning, good afternoon, happy time zone. Welcome on in, welcome to art club time with women. <laughs> hmm. Hmm? What's up? Standing at the old wooden cabinet at the front of the room, Eileen gives a couple more sharp tugs at the door with all her usual gentleness, i.e. none, before turning to Caprice. The door to the cabinet's locked. Hmm. Nah, they never lock it after class. She bounces over to Eileen and takes the handle in her grip, giving it several pulls at various creative angles in case it's jammed. After one last try, hard enough to have her feet slipping on the floor. Could you say that again? I didn't quite catch what she said. 
As they face off, I take a look at the cabinet between them. It's a type of lock I've tried before and not particularly high-end. Then again, I've never done this with two people peering over my shoulder. Um... Um... As they both look to me, I realize there isn't any backing down now. Glancing out the door to make sure there isn't anyone listening in, I continue on. I could maybe try picking it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what was that? What was that sound? Caprice, that was great. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, that's so difficult to do. I'm just making noises now. What am I doing? What am I doing? What? You can do that? Seriously? Someone sure has a knack for skills that upstanding people shouldn't have. All I can do in response is wilt. Eileen's not exactly wrong, even if I do like to think I only use such things when I should. We don't really have much of an option. Think you can do it? Accepting my fate, I get up and hold my hand towards them. Hmm. I'll need a couple of paper clips. <laughs> I can't do it for very long. <laughs> I need to stop. I need to stop. Taking to my feet once more, Eileen and Caprice look more dubious than impressed. Allie. Well, did you get it? Little more confident than Caprice, her face having been plastered right beside the lock out of curiosity as I work, uh, I take a long breath and reach out to the handle, giving it a timid tug. It's because I'm using my head voice. I got a hum instead. No, it's it's. I I can't. I can do it even less time if I try it like that. <laughs> this is so silly. What are we doing? <laughs> right. I take uh take a long breath and reach out to the handle, giving it a timid tug. The relief in the room is palpable as the old door creaks open, revealing shelf upon shelf of supplies. Ah! Awesome! Caprice gives a tight hug from behind in, appreci uh, in appreciation and excitement, leaving me to awkwardly laugh off the praise as Eileen starts taking her paints and brushes. As she writes herself and Caprice detaches herself from me, Eileen gives a couple of claps on the shoulder with her free hand. <gasps> Look at that, look, look at that expression. That is, that is the most begrudging appreciation. <laughs> you did good. Where, or maybe I should say why, did you pick up skills like that? <laughs> I just like learning things. <laughs> Taking an interest in the conversation, Caprice leans back towards us. What kind of things? Other cool stuff like that? Just things. Schoolwork wasn't too hard, so instead of studying, I ended up teaching myself stuff, like how to pick locks and tinker with different machines to keep myself occupied. Huh? Are you aware of how sketchy that sounds? Oh! It's not about doing bad things, they're just puzzles! <gasps> I do love puzzles. The point is working them out, not getting free stuff. Un unless... There's a vending machine that's stolen your money, right? Wait, that 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 isn't even free as well though, because if the vending machine already stole the money, it's just she was just getting what was already paid for. <sighs> when I put it that way, I guess it is pretty useless to learn. That's pretty funny to be saying right now. Caprice nudges Eileen, who just raises an eyebrow. She makes a decent point. 
I skipped a line, there we go. Hoping that no staff were around to notice what just happened, I throw the twisted paper clips into the bin before heading to my table as Caprice takes to hers and Eileen sits herself at her easel. Without further ado, we each set to work. Whoa. Oh, I love seeing it come together, wow. It's a nice atmosphere with the three of us working away at our own little projects. I'm not sure sketching cats in a notebook really counts as much of a project, but having friends around makes it somehow more meaningful. No, if, if that is a project for you, then don't belittle it. I feel like sketching cats in a notebook is a very worthwhile project. Personally, my, my personal opinion. With winter setting in, I find myself settled in for the evening on the couch, watching a movie on the television, a blanket draped over me to try and keep warm. Rose still isn't back from work, and with the garbage taken out and the washing up done, it probably won't hurt to take things easy for the rest of this evening. A loud ping comes from beside me, my hand automatically reaching for the phone sitting on the couch in response. Probably Rose saying she'll be late, dooming me to microwave noodles for dinner again. Look, instant noodles is fine. Just don't do them in the microwave. Just stick a, stick a pan on the, the stove. Like, stick a pan on the hob. Heat it up that way. Instant noodles are nice. <laughs> or perhaps not. I don't recognize the number or user avatar at all. Is this Eileen? Could this be Eileen? Could Eileen have gotten an upgrade to her flip phone? <laughs> Alison has such a fear of authority. I know, right? <laughs> Honestly understandable, me too. Also, Bob, hello. Thank you for the hydrate. Hi, hi. I will have a sip of my monster. Hi, hi. How's it going? The lurky hydration, thank you very much. Thank you for the hydration reminder. And thank you, thank you for always lurking as well. <laughs> thank you for luck. I hope you're doing all right. Who this? I briefly consider saying no, but that would be mean. Me, <laughs> me too. I can barely make out their picture beyond what I think to be yellow hair. I don't even know any blondes besides Eileen and Millie, and the latter's unlikely to be messaging me. Which means it has to be Eileen, right? Is this Alison? It is. Eileen? Wallace helped me set this thing up. Oh, yeah, she has. She's got an upgrade. What's with your profile pic? It took a photo when I was setting up. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, it, it makes me think of like, do you ever have a time when you get your phone out and you want to take a photo of something and you open your phone and it's on the, the front facing camera and you just get the most unflattering image of yourself? <laughs> it makes me think of that. It also reminds me a lot of the picture I took of Tiffany last night. Hold on. Hold on, I'm going to get it up real quick. I want to... I want to compare. I want to compare the picture of Tiffany I took last night with with this photo. They have a lot in common. Oh, this is going to be massive though. I'm going to have to resize this immediately. Ba 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 ba. Oh, it's so big. Ah! Ah! Look at that! Look at that comparison! Look! <laughs> this is a picture I took of Tiffany at about quarter to three in the morning this morning. I see the resemblance. I, I think there's a very close resemblance there. Eileen may be more of a dog person, but she's definitely cat vibes. <laughs> but look at that! Look at him. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> oh, you put a thin black piece of tape over the front phone. You're never taking yourself. That's actually really smart. 
that's very smart. Like, if you never plan on using the front camera, you don't need it. Just get rid of it. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah, it's the same picture, right? I, I can't believe my cat is is Eileen. Boom. <laughs> But yeah, as soon as I saw the profile picture, I was just like, wait, that looks so much like the Tiffany I took last night. <laughs> put her in the top corner. Oh, I should do. Wait, or I could... I could put her like... Here, hold on. Let me, let me put it behind me. Let me hide her behind me. There we go. We now have blurry Tiffany on the screen as well. <laughs> Also, Pasta Medusa, thank you for the luck. Welcome, welcome. Welcome in. How's it going? Oh, wait, I don't know why I'm saying how's it going when you're lurking. I hope you have a good luck. Thank you. My brain switched off. I'm I'm thinking of cats and Eileen. <laughs> but thank you for lurking. I hope you have a good day. Oh, but that that is very relatable. Just the accidental photos. Or in Xander's case, um, he will purposely take really ugly photos. If I leave my phone unattended and my brother is there, he will usually pick it up. He'll activate the camera because you can do that without unlocking it. And he'll take a selfie of himself pulling like th the worst expression with like from below double chins grimacing. <laughs> so I always come back to my phone and then I have like hideous Xander selfie. <laughs> it's pretty great. It's pretty great. I saved them all. Anyway. Yes. Uh, took a photo whilst setting up. Find any nice apps yet? I haven't tried looking. I don't really get it. I, I, I was fully expecting her to just be like, what's an app? <laughs> I can't help but giggle a little. I'm happy she's making the effort when she made it clear she wasn't interested before. I'll help you with it tomorrow. That would be good, thanks. Sorry if I type slowly, this keyboard is weird. Practice makes perfect? About that. Wanted to say sorry about the parents. Like, oh! <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, Alison was the one who who made the the remark, and Eileen's apologizing. Oh, I love her. I really, I really love her. I love Eileen so much. <laughs> I was too touchy. No, it's fine. It's okay. Wasn't really my business. Life doesn't always have a happy ending. Things don't work out, and that's that. You still have to try the- oh, she's- oh, <laughs> Alison. Alison, 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 please. Alison. Sometimes... Sometimes things are not worth working out. Sometimes they are, sometimes you do have to try. Sometimes it really is not worth working out. Sometimes things cannot be solved, and it's better for all parties to detach and disengage. And that's fine. <laughs> Not everything is a problem that has to be resolved. Sometimes the problem can be resolved by not being involved anymore. <laughs> oh, she's so naive though. She, 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 she's so naive. People are good. Look, exact. She's so naive. <laughs> she's so. Uh, uh, I love her, but oh my goodness. You just need to. <laughs> You just need to have faith. She really is. She's so... She's so innocent. She's so... Unblemished by the horrors of the world. Oh, goodness. <laughs> at least that's what I think. At, at least she did word it like that. At, at least... At least she added that. That's... That's good. I don't get you at all. <laughs> I think that goes both ways. Uh-huh. I see. 
Taken completely unawares, I leap off the couch and spin around, barely keeping a hold of the phone in my hand. Oh, I did it again. When did you get in? Just now. Sorry, couldn't help myself. I let out a long breath to steady myself as my heart slowly returns to its normal pace. Rose just grins churlishly as she walks off to hang up her coat. <laughs> uh, I love the thought of Rose just being like, eh -heh, she's talking to a boy, huh? <laughs> Roommate's back. Catch you tomorrow. See you. With that, I tap the side button to lock the phone once more, putting it on the counter beside me. <laughs> you look happy. Who are you talking to? All I can do is grimace, my face becoming flushed from embarrassment at her bullying. Thanks to my cheeks mildly hurting, I can tell she isn't wrong. I mean it. Does me good to see you managing to get yourself a social circle and all. You were you were worried? Can you blame me? No guys around, no friends, always been so nervous. You've changed a lot. I guess Eileen was right. Everyone really is there for me. Rose isn't wrong either. I do have friends now, and the art club's starting to become a welcome little slice of familiarity in the campus. Caprice, Wallace, Eileen, everyone's really nice to me. Yet it's Eileen I can't stop thinking about. Behind that cold exterior of hers, there's a genuinely kind person. Hmm. What's with that face? Nothing. Gonna come eat or play with your phone all day? Hee hee hee. Ah, she's... I, Alison is so, so innocent, so naive. A little painfully. Reminds me of... Before the world hardened me up. <laughs> With the sun beginning to set, Eileen and I say our goodbyes to Caprice before heading out into the hallway. Calming Caprice down after she gets a bright idea feels like trying to stifle a shaken soda can after opening it. She might still be brimming with energy, but the two of us leave the art club's room utterly deflated. <sighs> we should have just joined the normal art club. You know, the one which isn't led by a maniac. I wish I could get the two of them to see eye to eye more often. Caprice did say she's doing all this for Eileen's sake as much as her own, and she's far too straightforward to be lying about that, yet I don't think Caprice would be able to lie. She, she, she's so upfront with everything. I don't, I don't think she would be able to lie. Or if she did lie, I think she'd be a terrible liar and you would be able to tell she's lying immediately. Like she would just be like, um, I mean, yes, definitely, yeah. You believe me. <laughs> I, she'd be so bad. She, I, she's not a liar. I, I couldn't imagine her lying in a way that's not immediately obvious. <laughs> also, a mushroom coffee, coffee, cough, cough, coffee. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. And thank you for the hydrate too. Let me have a sip of my monster energy. As I refuel to continue. But thank you for the hydrate and the follow. Welcome on in. I hope you enjoy your time here. It's difficult to push back on Eileen, though, given how prideful a person she is. I seem to attract strong-willed friends. It's it's because... I, I feel a little bad saying this. I'm pretty sure it's because she is so weak-willed that she kind of, like, gravitates towards strong-willed personalities because otherwise two weak-willed people will just not do anything. <laughs> um... She is a lot. She means well, though. Well, maybe it's not so bad if you're around to keep her occupied. For what it's worth, I was actually thinking this might be a fun little adventure. I wanted to thank you for making all of this work out. 
She makes an exquisitely awkward face, caught between my thanking her and the idea of having to share her room with us and anyone else Caprice manages to rope in from now on. I just smile as we start down the quiet hallway, Eileen taking a look out the window. <laughs> Monster? Why no water? I... I, I should probably have a, a hydrating drink as well though you're right let me uh I've, I've got sprite i've got sprite sprite it's sprite zero so there's no sugar or anything so this is hydrating this is more hydrating than caffeine is i will have some of this i will actually have actual hydration as well as monster <laughs> Her gaze lingers for just that little longer than usual, the snow once again having started falling outside. I can't blame her, given how pretty it looks. It is so pretty. It's so pretty. I love it. Damn, going to be shoveling snow again. What a pain. Hi, Brisket! Welcome! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Welcome on into to First Snow Time, featuring me getting distracted and talking about literally everything in the universe ever as we play. <laughs> How's it going? She really isn't the sentimental type. Huh? Did I say something wrong? I was just thinking, you don't seem to have a very romantic view of the world, being an artist. Pretty good. Enjoying a monster. Oh, happy to hear it. Happy to hear it. Guess what? I am also enjoying a monster. <laughs> I'm gonna have another sip. Hee <laughs> hee. Let's go, monster buddies. I'm here being a bad influence, telling everyone to drink monster energy. <laughs> but I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. We got women. Is there much good about winter? <clears throat> Being back with family, all the pretty snow around, people in cute jackets and coats, holidays. I end up trailing off, Eileen hardly looking swayed as I count my favorite things about the season on my fingers. Holidays are the problem. Everywhere's starting to close up or shut down for the new year already. I want to keep practicing instead of loafing around, but the life drawing classes are over and all the student modeling offers have dried up. I think I know where this is going. I think I know where this is going. I think I know where this is going. I. Oh. Oh. I think I know where this is going. Please. I have seen notices for those on the notice boards around campus, with students and others making a little cash on the side by modelling for artists. Those same notice boards have become much more bare over the last month. I feel sorry for her, given she takes her painting so seriously. I was so caught up in wanting to be back with my family that I didn't even think... Uh, I didn't think about how it'd be for her, especially when she doesn't get along with hers. As we walk along the hallway, I realize this might present an opportunity, a chance for me to help Eileen and be a part of her painting, instead of simply watching her from afar. Yes, it is. I, I did know where this is going. Yes! I'm not completely sure about this, but my obvious scheming has already caught Eileen's eye. Um... If it'd be helpful, I mean... Maybe I could do it? At this, Eileen stops and turns to me. Should I not have suggested this? You just need me to stand around and be a model, right? There's not a lot to it. This would be live modeling, you know. I don't want to give you the wrong idea. The, uh, uh, the reminder does make me hesitate. I know there's nothing sexual about it, but I'd be standing without clothes on as she alone looked at me, analyzing my whole body. Eileen herself doesn't look fussed, though she rarely does. She seems content to let me come to a conclusion myself as she stands around, but 
my body language soon gives away what I'm thinking. Sorry if I made you uncomfortable. I can just work on other studies instead. No, I mean... She did mention herself that she's done this before. It'd simply be another method of practicing painting for her. Would it be in your apartment or something? Yeah. Yeah? Oh. Huh. She looks mildly surprised I'm still considering this. If it was anyone else, I don't think I could do this. For Eileen, though. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. It's fine. I'll do it. Is that it? Oh. We set down our coats as we enter her apartment, the bright light giving such a different look to her living room compared to mine. As for Eileen herself, I don't get how she isn't exhausted at all after a walk like that from school. But try as I might to distract myself, something feels off no matter how I try to ignore it. Painting live models is probably totally normal for an artist like Eileen, so I don't bother saying anything as she sets down her coat. Want a drink or something? I'm fine, thanks. Sure. Suit yourself. I'll grab my stuff, just make yourself comfortable. She walks off to get her easel and paints... Oh, she walks off to get her easel and paints as I nod. Without much else to do as she disappears into another room, I idly look around while taking off my own coat and gloves. <gasps> the bunny! Bunny! I love the bunny. I love the bunny so much. <laughs> and they were roommates. Oh, I, I hope they become roommates. I want them to be roommates. Her apartment hasn't been cleaned up this time, which is an interesting change. Beyond the easel with a finished painting still sitting on it, a few colourful fashion magazines lie on the coffee table, near a mug left sitting around. On the couch, a couple of crumpled t-shirts and an old pair of jeans lie strewn over the back and arm. What catches my eye most, however, is the resident who looks very comfortable on the other end of it. Without thinking, I walk over and pick him up. I would also do the exact same thing. I would, I would also. <laughs> oh, look. Look at the bunny. Oh, that's so cute. I, w I wanna, I wanna hug it too. I would also pick it up. A particularly large stuffed rabbit, big enough to need two hands to hold comfortably. Though well made and adorably designed, it's obviously a little well loved by now. That's the best kind. It's the best kind of toy. I'm sure I'd have noticed such a thing if it were around when Wallace and I came for dinner, so it must have been stuffed into her bedroom or something. Was she embarrassed? <laughs> Wait, don't don't be embarrassed about Bunny. Bunny's so cute. I Oh, I love this. Noticing movement out of the corner of my eye, I turn and look up. Eileen stim simply stares at me, face flat, as she holds a bag of supplies in her hand. I really shouldn't have just gone and started fiddling with her stuff. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um. It's really cute. She puts her bag down and sighs, giving me a bit of relief that she isn't angry. Silently, she strides over and takes the toy from me as I offer it to her. Hmm. My sister gave it to me to keep me company when I moved out. Oh, that's cute! I'm disappointed by how little emotions in Eileen's voice when she says so, but those thoughts quickly disappear as she gently sets down the rabbit where it had been. Ah. She takes care to set it down gently, with a quick brush of its fur. That momentary smile as she steps back and looks at it warms my heart. That's so cute. I, I bet that's how she deals with homesickness. Like, 
Especially if she gets along with her sister. Just hug the bunny and pretend it's her. <laughs> it only lasts for a second, but her face is unmistakably that of a child. One taking care of their favourite companion. So Eileen does have a cute side to her. <laughs> I somehow feel a bit less wound up about everything now. She's not that different to me in the end. As she turns away, I remember the task at hand. So... I'll just set up the easel and canvas, then I'll have everything ready. Should... Uh, should I take my clothes off then? Of course it starts being voiced now. <laughs> Ooh, uh, whew. She's about to answer before pausing for a moment. Much as I might try to stifle my awkwardness, undressing in front of someone else is still weird. If it's a problem, you can grab a towel. I can make do. Oh... Feeling more than a little sheepish, I glance around to be more sure of my surroundings. The blinds are shut as they were before, and the door's still locked, so I'm not sure what I expected. Maybe the silence is putting me off, the apartment being set so far back the road, unlike mine. I'm 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 just having like the horrible thought now of just like, what if Wallace just walks in part way through? <laughs> Please no. I want to say that I'm fine, but I can't quite get over the stumbling block of being bared in front of someone. Meeting halfway will have to do for now. Oh, fun fact! There's an achievement locked be behind downloading the 18 plus patch, but it has nothing to do with looking at the content. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I know there is an 18 plus patch. So... I, I might do that once I finish the game. I will install the patch and see what that is. Uh, th wait, I, th I, th I have an idea. I have an idea of what it may be. Is it, like, is installing the 18 plus patch, does it then add an option for, like, 18 plus content that you can turn off, even if you have the patch installed? Because I did notice an achievement that I was curious about. <laughs> Yes! Oh, I have to do that. I will do that afterwards as well. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love the thought of going out of your way to download an 18 plus patch and then just immediately turning it off. <laughs> ah, meeting halfway will have to do for now. As Eileen sets her previous painting on the kitchen counter, I pop into the bathroom. Yes, I'm afraid we are on Twitch TV. So this is family friendly, no 18 plus patch first. No. But hey, if you want to play it yourself, there is an 18 plus patch. If you want it. And the game is free. It's a free to play game. You can just download it. So anyway, uh, my heart's practically in my mouth as I reappear in the room with a towel wrapped around me. Precious little being covered as I take my place before her. Should I stand like this, or...? <laughs> she looks at me for a few moments in serious thought. It's a little interesting how quickly her demeanor changes to that of a painter, carefully considering how best to use my body as an artistic prop. Hold on, actually, before I go through all of this, I'm gonna roll back a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to roll back to, like, here and save for absolutely no reason. No reason. Don't, don't worry about it. Uh... All right, back to here. Uh... <laughs> right, where were we? Try turning around so your back's towards me. Oh, the, the, the over-the-shoulder look. Oh. My thoughts are in a haze, unable to let go of how exposed I am. All I can do is nod and dutifully do as she says. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Keep your head like that and maybe let your arms hang down. Like... like this? Oh, she sounds so nervous. Oh. Yeah, just stay like that. I 
give a nod, trying to relax as much as I can. That isn't saying much, though. Oh, she <laughs> the blush. Oh, she's so embarrassed. I, I love Alison so much. She is such a sweetheart, such an a innocent little sweetheart. Ah. There's no other sound in the room as she starts sketching me out, the pencil's sharp scratching filling the air. It's certainly an odd experience to think somebody's looking at my body so analytically, taking in every detail, considering it, and copying it to canvas. For Eileen's sake, I try to keep as still as possible despite the butterflies in my stomach. Her pencil work apparently finished, the gentle sound of brush, brush strokes starts as her painting begins in earnest. She's fast at her sketching. I suppose she'd have a good bit of practice at this. The CG art always has such great expressions. It really does. Oh, it's like... I feel like it's so important for a CG to really, like, give you an emotional moment in games like these. And every single time so far, it 100%. I'm t <laughs> I can't see much at all with my head slightly down like this, but at least this position is easy to keep. Without anything in particular to focus my eyes on, I can't help but turn my thoughts inward. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my. Also, Lily Droid, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on in. Wow, you, you joined at um, figure drawing time. Welcome. <laughs> welcome on in. Thank you for following. Ooh, the best part. Yeah, tr truly joining at the perfect moment. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome. How do people do this without getting self-conscious? <laughs> expression. Oh. Nobody's ever looked at my naked body like this, carefully analyzing every curve and muscle. I wonder how I look to her right now. Am I gross? Compared to Eileen, I probably look plain at best. Hey, I know it's not easy, but can you try not to tense up so much? <laughs> Oh, of course she'd be able to tell when her muscles are tensing. Oh, that's that's e that makes it even more intimate somehow. I glance back at Eileen. Our eyes meet, and I force myself to face forward again, resuming my pose. Sorry, it's okay. Not too much longer. Uh... Her expression was so focused and analytical. I sometimes forget that serious artwork can take so much knowledge and logic as well as creativity. I really am just an art prop for her. That's good. If I remember that, this isn't so bad. Eileen's done this plenty of times and I can trust her. I was the one who offered anyway. Look at this little blushy smile. The reason I did this was to help her and now I can finally be a part of her true passion of painting. I feel the corners of my mouth tug a little at the idea. It makes me feel a little special that she's looking at me this way. While she's no doubt done life drawing before, this is something different. Only now do I realize that Eileen's brush strokes have ceased. Just as I work up the will to question her, Eileen speaks up. All right, you can move now. A weight comes off me as my entire body slumps, a long breath escaping my lips. It feels like my entire body deflates. Thankful that my duty has been fulfilled, I adjust the towel a little to ensure it doesn't slip off. My first thought is to go where I've carefully placed my clothes, but on the way, I'm distracted by the sight of it. Oh, wow. I'm left speechless. I have to resist the urge to reach out and touch it. This is how Eileen sees me. Not gross, nor plain. I feel my heart sting a little as my eyes move across the canvas, seeing through Eileen's eyes how she sees me. As I stand gazing at the painting, I feel a coat come over me, 
I lean draping it over my shoulders. I'm about to thank her before the words are stolen from my mouth by her different demeanor. She's blushing. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh. oh. Compared to her intense focus while painting, her gaze awkwardly avoids my appreciative expression. All I can do is smile as I clasp the coat tight, the bashful Eileen standing in silence beside me. It's beautiful. Wow. You're beautiful. Wow. Oh, what a, what an incredible scene. What a... Wow. <laughs> the street lights lead us along as we walk along the snow-dusted street, their pinpricks of light piercing the evening's darkness. The two of us walk side by side without a word, the only sound being snow crunching underfoot. Far from the silence feeling, ap feeling oppressive, I'm rather glad that we don't need to fill the air with idle conversation. Oh, a comfortable silence, my favorite. Such a great romantic scene, right? Right, it's like it manages to be romantic without even like being romantic. It's, there's just such a tenderness to it. It's so tender, I think. I think the tenderness is what I love about it the most. It's just, oh. It really felt like something special there. Like, it's such a special moment. Like, a moment of connection. The trust being developed, yes! And, like, Eileen's realization as well. Like, when she's painting, she's fully... She's fully in work mode. But then the way she gets a little bit bashful after it's done, and she's realizing, like, actually, this very beautiful woman has taken her clothes off in my room. <laughs> Just be like, oops, there, there it is. There's, there's the, the, the gay, the gay boundary has been crossed very, very far. Oh, I love them. I love that. That, that, that scene was. Oh, no, it's the tenderness. With our classes finished, I offered to repay her for the dinner she'd made for me. Hardly want to turn down a free meal, she readily accepted. It's not like that excuse to bring her over was a lie, as such. Or at least that's what I tell myself. Uh, ulterior motives, baby. In truth, I want to be closer to Eileen. As I throw furtive glances to her, I muse about how the times we're together feel different to when I'm with others. Her earnest yet clumsy attempts to help me feeling all the more rewarding. I'm not sure, but I don't think these feelings are just friendship anymore. Neither do I. I, I don't think they're just friendship. I don't think they have been ever since you first saw her and thought, wow, attractive woman. Like, that. that's... <sighs> I love this. I love this. And does this... Oh, does this also mean that Alison is making the first move? Oh my... And the character development. She's growing so much from the the shy girl at the start who wouldn't talk to anybody. It seems like she's actually getting ready to make a move now. I'm, I am so proud of her. That's something even I can't do. <laughs> even if I wanted to. I would... I've... I don't know. Huh. You're lucky to live so close to school. <sighs> I still have no idea how you can hike all the way to your place every single day and not be exhausted. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't wimp out of walking. Being fit has its advantages. <laughs> While I stop myself from imagining how fit Eileen's body is, I'm reminded that she's seen my own body. I cringe in embarrassment as I remember modeling for her the other day, trying to shake off the feeling before she notices. Eventually, we reach the now familiar apartment building, the two of us stopping a moment. I'm a little surprised myself at how quickly I came to think of this place as home, the ill-maintained bu building feeling so foreboding at first. I'm. 
I don't know how to read. Hold on, I'm gonna have some more monster. <laughs> I don't I don't know why I stumbled over that sentence. That feels like such a straightforward sentence to read. It's okay, nothing a bit of monster energy won't fix. Everything here is so different to home, right down to the street lights we stand under. Gone were the modern white lights of downtown and the suburbs, replaced by dull orange lamps which occasionally flickered. Um... Well, here it is. I'm more than a little nervous about what she thinks of this new home after bringing her all the way here. Rather than judging me for it, she looks more to be carefully studying it. My nervous attempts to read her stoic gaze get me nowhere. Looks nice. So, what's your roommate like, anyway? Oh, here we go. No sooner do the words leave her mouth than she jumps from her hand, latching tightly onto her shoulder. Rose, please don't scare her off, please. <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't even notice her in the darkness. She must have been having a smoke outside when she saw us. Hey! Yo! <laughs> oh, look. Look at Eileen. She looks so nervous. Oh, look at that. She she really looks like she's just standing so awkwardly. She does not know how, what to do here. As we sit at the dinner table, Eileen's gaze has trouble staying on us. I know those eyes well. They're those of a tourist, taking in everything around them while desperately trying to engrave it in memory. Or perhaps in order to judge my living conditions. I have to admit, this must look a bit shabby compared to her home. She's surely worked out that I'm not exactly well off from the area already though. Compared to Eileen's apartment, ours is full with the artifacts of life. A couple stuffed animals, some movie posters and DVDs around the place, an aging console next to the television, and various bits and bobs accumulated through the years litter the room. Eileen's eyes pass over it all, but she stays unusually subdued. Perhaps the reason isn't the room itself, but the person sitting across from her. Huh? So, this is where you live, huh? Sorry if it's a bit cold, the heating's having problems. <laughs> you mean having problems as usual? Beckos try to put on a front. I know it doesn't look great from the outside, but we try to keep the place nice to live in. Fixing leaks, giving the place a lick of paint, patching holes and all that. Gets Alison a crash, crash course in handiwork too. It isn't much, but it's home. It's gotta count for something, right? It does. You've done a good job on making this place homely. You never told me you were this good at science and math, Alison. No wonder it seems so easy for you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. She gestures towards the trophy on the side table and certificate on the wall above it, being awards from competitions I won in high school. Huh? Um... You never asked. Alison! What? Seriously? Alison, come on. I earn a playful clip over the head, Eileen snorting in amusement. <laughs> she was good enough to get a science scholarship thanks to that brain of hers. Never having been great at knowing how to respond to praise, I just hang my head. Oh, what a mood. What a mood. It feels a little embarrassing to be complimented in front of Eileen. <sighs> Makes sense. She got, she's got me out of a jam a few times now. She's a handy person to have around. I feel myself flower into a blush at the words, sinking lower into my chair as my face feels hot. I'm surprised how nice it feels, despite being so awkward. A smile spreads on my face as my legs sway beneath the table with unexpected energy. It feels different when it comes from Eileen. Yeah, that's a little bit gay. Teeny, teeny tiny bit. Little bit. Thanks. Thanks for the food, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing. Nice to finally meet someone from Allison's side of the fence for a change, actually. I was starting to get worried that she didn't have any friends. Don't, don't say that out loud. That's embarrassing. I can only bring my hand to my face as Eileen raises an eyebrow in pointed interest. 
I do wish Rose wouldn't make such a big deal out of my being shy. Huh? Really? Not exactly the outgoing type, I guess. I'm shocked. She takes a large sip of the soda before her, before continuing on. There's a few of us in her little circle now. No thanks to her dragging me into a club. Eileen! You agreed to come. It's Caprice's club anyway. Huh. Oh, so now you have nothing to do with it. This is a new story. <laughs> All I can do is grimace as Eileen lifts an eyebrow, getting the rise out of me that she wanted. Yeah, to be fair. To be fair, I am the one who actively asked her to join. She softens the blow a little with a small nudge from her shoulder, earning a smile from Rose. Eileen gives a mighty yawn, poorly hidden by a hand over her mouth. I don't think I've seen her bother trying to hide one before. Sorry. Tired? Uh, I'm always tired. Mood. What a mood. <laughs> What's with the bags under your, under your eyes anyway? Rough night. Don't just ask that, Rosa. Rosa that's... <laughs> wow. Insomnia. It's fun stuff. Oh, double mood. Double mood. What the heck? Stop it. Here I was trying to be tactful and not bringing that up, and Rose just kicks down the door as usual. That does give some context to Eileen's short fuse, though I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Well, they say good wholesome food can fix that. Hopefully this will pick you up a bit. I wish it was that easy to fix insomnia, oh my goodness, I <laughs> can't believe it. All I need is a good wholesome meal, and I'll be, I'll be fine again. <laughs> yeah, all of this is such a mood. <sighs> Nothing says homemade like burger and fries, after all. As the two talk, I quietly begin on my food. I hadn't realized how empty I was, the fries disappearing into my mouth at a quick pace. Thank goodness for having a good metabolism. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's hungry. I look up quizzically at her, drawing a raised eyebrow. It's only now I realize my cheeks are as full as a chipmunk's. <laughs> oh my goodness, Allison, Allison, chew. Don't forget to chew your food. <laughs> good to see you two get along well. Rose takes a hold of my shoulder and gives it a playful shake, my head bobbing to and fro as I try to avoid choking on the fry on its way down. I, yeah, that is such an adorable mental image. I love the thought. The thought of uh, Alison just being there with both of her cheeks puffed out like... I wish I could puff my cheeks out. I don't have the, the super expensive rigging to do that. <laughs> Alison's fine. Quiet as a mouse and manages to put up with my crap. <laughs> Considering how much she takes care of chores and errands, I, I can't really complain. You mean considering how nice of a person I am, right? That too. <laughs> the three of us munch away on our food, the quiet sound of cars outside and prattling from the television, providing what little noise there is to be heard. It seems like Eileen is starting to settle, which is a relief. It took me a while myself when I first met Rose. Surprised you two can keep your figures eating this kind of stuff. You don't have it often, do you? Rose and I share a quick glance. No. No, not at all. Not often, just special events. There we go, falling afoul of Eileen's judgement. It's like, hey, so you eat junk food all the time, huh? <laughs> Should just get a rice cooker. Buy rice in bulk, grab some vegetable packets, throw them together. Easy, cheap, healthier than takeout. Hmm. I have to admit, it was nice when I dated a guy who could cook. Honestly, having a rice cooker has changed my life. We didn't have a rice cooker for a really long time, and then, like, I was at my friends. I was with some of my friends, and I mentioned to them that I don't have a rice cooker, and they 
they proceeded to buy me a rice cooker as a gift. <laughs> and it's it's so nice. I love rice cookers. I I'm just a big fan of rice in general. Like just I will eat plain rice on its own, like plain unseasoned rice. I just like rice. Like I would rather not. I would rather have it seasoned and have stuff with it. But also, I just like rice that much that I will just eat it in any form, pretty much. I really like rice. But yeah, we use it all the time. Because before, when we were cooking rice, we would have to, like, cook it over the stove in a pan, like, keeping an eye on it the whole time, making sure it doesn't boil over, making sure the, the water doesn't run too low. It was It's like a full babysitting job to do it on the stove. And having the rice cooker and just, like, throwing it all in, it's... Oh, it's so nice. It's so good. I love it. But yeah, I love rice. I love rice with so many things. I feel like it just goes with so many things as well. Like, sometimes I will literally just, like, cook up some chicken nuggets, cook up some rice, just plop them together in a bowl. Voila, delicious filling meal. It's so nice. I love rice. <laughs> Yeah, just love plain white rice, to be honest. Honestly, me too. Oh, rice plus sesame seeds plus soy sauce is your can't-be-bothered-to-cook meal. Yeah, it's perfect. It's so easy to do. Uh, get some rice, throw it in a pan, crack an egg in the frying rice, throw some chicken powder in, cut veggies, bam, nice meal. Yeah, it's so nice. And one thing we do a lot as well is, like, we make stir-fries. We'll have, like, rice stir-fries. It's literally just, like... Throw everything in a pan, fry it up for a little bit, plonk it in a bowl of rice, it, and it's just so good. It's just so nice. Uh, Xander always seasons it so well as well. He's Xander is the cook of the family. He's he's really good at cooking, and we get loads of herbs and spices in. So he'll just experiment. He'll just every time we have a stir fry, he'll just be like, "Wait, what would happen if I add this?" And if I put in less of this, but add some of this, and it always tastes really good. <laughs> He's really good at it. He just, he just like knows what works. He like figures out what works well and makes it taste delicious. It's very nice. But yeah, I love, I love rice. Nah, stovetop rice is easy. Just use twice the amount of water, wait for it to boil, then lower heat and cover no peaking for 15 minutes. I... I, I I can't do that. I I feel the need to peek. I I probably ruin it by taking the lid off to have a little look. Like <laughs> that's my problem. <laughs> yeah, the peeking is what made it makes it harder. Yeah. That's the problem. But I always get so paranoid. I always get so paranoid that something's going to go wrong and like I need to babysit it, which is why I like the rice cooker because like <laughs> I, I close the lid of that and then I can't see anything, but I trust the machine to do it for me. But yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I don't really like cooking. I like other people <laughs> cooking. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I just started choking on air for no reason. Let me, <laughs> let me have some, let me have a sip of my drink. Huh, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine now. But yeah, I'm I'm just no good at cooking. I I worry too much and I always worry about doing something wrong, which is why it's so hard because cooking is it's more of an art than a science. So there isn't really like doing things right and wrong and that's that's why I don't like it. But it's okay because Xander likes it, so I, I just let him do it all. I just I just let him make the nice food and then I just eat it afterwards. It's it's great. <laughs> it works out so well for me. <laughs> it's alright. I just like buy him a chair for his birthday instead. Like, hey, you want a desk chair? Here you go. <laughs> Thank you for all the nice food and the family Fridays. <laughs> but yeah, I I I love I love I love rice. Oh, that's like the complete opposite impression you have of cooking. No, it's... See, if it's baking, baking is more of a science. Baking, I am, like, tentatively okay at. 
because it's so precise. You have to get the measurements so right. Baking is really unforgiving. But I feel like with cooking, there are so many more, like, elements that can be changed. Like, there are so many little variables that can be changed and make things better or worse. Like, obviously there's that with baking as well, but to a, a lesser extent. And I'm... I don't know what it is as well, though, but I'm also the kind of person where I can follow a recipe to the letter and it won't turn out right. <laughs> I will follow it so precisely down to, like, the, the, the very minute instructions on the recipe and it still won't turn out how it should. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I just have, like, an anti-cooking vibe around me, I guess. I, I just can't do it. So it got to the point where I'm like, well, I'd rather not stress myself out with it. If I don't have to do it and I don't enjoy it, then I will simply not do it. Look, I know how to, I know how to put rice in the rice cooker. I know how to do instant noodles on the stove. I know how to throw chicken nuggets in the oven. That's, that's all I need. That's all I need, right? <laughs> that's all I need. Yeah, uh, cooking is an art, baking is a science. Yeah, that's, that's the phrase I've heard. And Mum Mark, hello! Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, the location you're baking in can also affect how it turns out. Yeah, you'll just be like, you need to make sure you have the, the right ingredients, the, the right setting, the right temperature, the right uh, environment. You have to make sure mercury's not in retrograde. Uh, <laughs> so many elements. So many elements involved. And yeah, I'm 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 pretty good at baking cupcakes though. I can I can do some pretty decent cupcakes. I've I've mastered my my cupcake baking recipe over time. And one thing I like to do is I like to make rainbow cakes where I'll just make the cake batter, and then I'll split it into bowls and put different food coloring in each bowl, and then just like plop it all in the in the little cake cases on top of each other. So then when the cakes are baked, they're all, they're all like rainbow inside. <laughs> I haven't made rainbow cakes in so long. I should do that sometime. That'd be fun. I See if I've actually remembered how to make cupcakes. I may have forgotten over the years. <laughs> but ah, uh, hi, taking a break from work right now before your meeting. Oh, I hope the meeting goes well. Thank you for stopping in in your break. You joined at a great time. I'm, I'm talking about food. Make sure mercury isn't in retrograde and make sure there's no mercury in the pan. I would hope not. I would hope there wouldn't be mercury in the pan. How would that get there in the first place? <laughs> anyway, back to... Back to family conversations. <laughs> huh? Having her around doesn't make things too awkward when you bring guys over? Oh, also, funny story. You had a dream you were watching my stream? Wait, I love that. What 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 was the dream like? What kind of <laughs> What kind of stream was it? Wait, you had to un auto mod yourself because the filter caught something you said. <laughs> That's so funny. Bum bum bum. And uh firstly, thank you for the follow. Welcome. I I was about I was about to comment on the username. I'm really glad you've clarified that. <laughs> but hello, welcome on in. Hello, welcome to drink two to three liters of water a day. Uh, this includes you, chat. Not a fetish thing, all good names were taken. Sadly, you now have to specify. <laughs> yeah, I guess like the combination of that username along with hydration can make people get the wrong impression. But thank you for the hydrate. <laughs> thank you very much. I will have a sip of my drink. It's always good to stay hydrated. Honestly, I... I think I'm probably a little bit dehydrated at the moment anyway. I've not been drinking enough recently. I'm. It's the kind of thing where I only really notice it when I start to get super tired. And then my lips start to chap. And when that happens, I'm like, I have not been drinking enough water. I need to fix this. So the past couple of days, I've been like super hydrating because last week I, I've not been looking after myself. But it makes me glad that I have I have the the hydrate redeem to remind me too. Everyone makes me do so well at everyone's so good at making me look after myself. Like the constant posture checks. I'm always sitting up straight. I'm always looking after myself, having a little sippy every now and then. 
It's a good time. But yes, thank you for the follow though. Thank you for, for stopping in. Oh, and emails made you specify after over a year of doing it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you do specify though. That's that's good. It's a shame you have to. But yeah, I, I, I saw the username and I was like, hold on a second. I'm glad it is fine. <laughs> Oh, oh, all you remember is it was a Family Friday stream and you told Xander to explode and he made the worst noise ever. We all congratulated him on it. And you remember me saying, that was something. <laughs> that sounds exactly like what, a, what would happen in a Family Friday stream. I feel like that would happen. That would fully happen. That's, that's just our streams. Xander would make a horrific exploding noise and I would go, that? was something <laughs> that's so funny oh have a good rest of stream everybody thank you for stopping in kirklander i hope you have a good day oh you you never drink enough water susan mate the only time you drink a lot of water is when you stream because of redeems and all the reading okay well i'm now telling i'm giving you a hydrate command right now i'm gonna use a hydrate redeem on you right now we all have a sip. We all have a joint sip. We're going to look after ourselves together. We're going to have a self-care moment. Everyone's going to have a big stretch. I'm going to have a big stretch. We're all going to have a sippy of our drinks. <laughs> a group sip. Like that. Oh, you drink a lot since your country's on fire right now. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear it. I'm glad you're staying hydrated though. It's always good. Ah, <sighs> but yeah, I, I need to drink more. I need to look after myself more. My lips are still a little bit dry, honestly. Dry lips. It's it's always like the first sign. As soon as my lips start getting dry, I have the moment of, hold on, I've not been drinking enough recently. <laughs> it's a really nice like warning sign. Because my lips don't usually get chapped. Like, the only times they get chapped are if I start getting dehydrated. So I, I always know I have that little warning sign. <laughs> but it would be preferable to not get to that point in the first place. Right. But yeah, let's get back to here. Oh, yeah, if you feel a headache coming and you know it's from the sun, drink a lot of water. Yeah, that's the best way to stave it off. Because dehydrations can... Dehydration can give you, like, awful headaches as well. But yeah, anyway, let's return to game. Having her around doesn't make things too awkward when you bring guys over. You learn to be quiet. <laughs> I guess you would. Oh, this is awkward. Well, this is a really awkward conversation to be listening to. Huh? <laughs> Oh my. I frown at the both of them. Hmm. I don't want to hear about this. <laughs> if you don't didn't know already, that means I've been doing a good job. I didn't need to know that. Thank you. Rose's comment only causes my frown to deepen. I can feel myself blushing just from the topic of conversation, which just embarrasses me more. Besides, if you ever get a boyfriend, you're going to have to learn too if you want to bring him around here. I won't be doing anything like that. <laughs> Rose laughs and even Eileen looks amused. I sulk, hating that the attention has been centered on me now. I especially don't want this kind of conversation around Eileen. Thankfully, Rose seems content with her teasing. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, oh, right now you're making some Arnold Palmer while we're talking about drinking water. Arnold Palmer. Yes. Oh, half southern sweet tea and half lemonade. I see. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a very British person. There have been many American things mentioned to me that I, I have no idea what they are. Like I remember the first time I played Heart of the Woods. Uh. As soon as it mentioned everyone being on an Amtrak, I was like, what the heck is an Amtrak? I've got to Google this. I, <laughs> I have no idea what this is. Oh, it's a train. Okay, I know what that is. <laughs> uh, can relate to your surroundings being on fire. Honestly, 
sadly me too. Thankfully the weather here at the moment is really, really mild. We've had really mild weather recently. Like it's not been too cold, but it's not hot either. It's nice weather. And oh, Suzume, your lips are dry so much that you started carrying chapstick. Yeah, I have chapstick as well, but considering I always know that my lips get chapped when I'm dehydrated, I I rarely use chapstick. Like, I prefer to like attack the root cause instead and just drink loads of water. <laughs> but sometimes they do get so rough that I've actually got a really, really nice one. Hold on, actually, I want to see if I can find my lip balm. Hold on. Which bag would it be in? Is it this bag? It is not in this bag. So it'll be in this bag. Ugh. Ignore the cans you can hear clattering around. Is it not in here? I've lost my lip balm. Hold on, I have an idea actually. I, I know where it might be. Is it? Okay, no, it's not in my jacket pocket either. I, I'm, I'm stuck. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Never mind. Either way, it's a really nice one. It's. It's like, it's in an orange tube. I've forgotten like the make and brand and everything of it, but it's in like an orange tube. It's like kind of flat. Like it feels like the tube has been squashed down and it's got like honey. Has it got honey with it? It's got something added to it that makes it, makes my lips feel super, super soft. It's really, really nice. And it's like the guaranteed thing, like, if my lips get too bad, I know I can put that lip balm on and I'll be fine in, like, a couple of hours. It's so... It's it's like a proper, like, healing balm. <laughs> is it beeswax? It might be beeswax! I think it is beeswax. That sounds... That, that would make way more sense than honey. I, I was thinking of the bees. I, was, I got the bees. It's, it's, it is. It's a beeswax one. And it's really, really nice. Ha. Huh. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> oh, we're, we're on to like awkward times now. The, the propolis maybe? Hold on, let me Google. Ah, oh, it's made... Bees use it to build hives. Ah, I see. It might be that. Hold on. I wonder if I can find it just by googling. Lip balm orange tube. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> I can't believe that one. I just googled lip balm orange tube and I found it. It is O'Keefe's Lip Repair. That's the one I use. It is O'Keefe's Lip Repair. This isn't the exact one I have. But it's really good. It's really, really good at just healing up my lips. Is this one? Oh, does this not? This might not have beeswax. I might be thinking of a different one. I've, I've tried quite a few lip balms in my time. This doesn't seem to have that. Hold on. Ingredients. No, it does. It has it has beeswax. <laughs> it's O'Keefe's lip repair, and it's really nice. Hold on, let me let me let me show you. Why is that so big? Why? <laughs> oh no! Why did it? Why is this image so big? I just saved it off Boots website. It's this one. This is my lip balm. <laughs> It's really, really good. It's really good. It's it it heals my lips, like in instantly. It's really, really good. 
Anyway, I didn't expect that image to be so large. I just saved it from the Boots Pharmacy website. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. I just I just really like this lip balm. Oh, that would be the weirdest sponsorship to get for a VTuber to be like, hey, lip balm. You can't even see the chat lips, but just imagine them. It's all good. Anyway. <laughs> right, let's get back to the game. I've... Oh, I can't believe talking about hydration ended up with me showing off my O'Keefe's lip repair. <laughs> Well, this is gonna be awkward, maybe. So, what's your story? You're a friend of Allison's, right? Turned out that way. Just... Just another student at the community college majoring in art. The artsy type, huh? Going for the big bucks, then? <sighs> Thanks. I'm sure you'll find something. Hopefully not involving burgers and fries. Eileen's limits are clearly being tested, being less tolerant of being poked at than I. Hopefully Rose realises it. Yeah, dude, I don't think Eileen would enjoy being playfully teased. <laughs> hey, yeah, you, yeah, you with the dry lips. Don't you try and lick them. That's one thing I've gotten really good at. No matter how dry my lips are, I don't lick them anymore because of so many experiences in the past where I lick my lips and they get worse. So now I'm like, it doesn't matter how dry my lips are, I do not lick them. I'm good at that. Instead I get my lip balm out, which I seem to have misplaced at the moment, but... Oh, I just realized something, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just an idiot. It's literally on my bedside counter. It's, it's on my bedside cabinet. Because... I was putting it on my lips over the weekend because I hadn't been drinking enough. It's literally on my bedside table. I can't... <laughs> I was rooting around in my bags and my jacket to try and find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, we distract ourselves from the unsay-so conversation these two are having. Yeah, it's d just like, oh my, um, 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 so how about drinking water to stay healthy, eh? Yeah? Want to talk about that? <laughs> you seem like the artsy type yourself. What's with all the ink? Eileen motions to Rose's left side while brandishing a french fry. The tattoo on her upper arm only made more noticeable by her tank top. Looks cool. <laughs> Seriously? Uh-huh. Expected it to be my life story or something? That was my first. Oh, Wait, yeah. no, forget what I said. I'm in the Yakuza, and they gave me these as my initiation. <laughs> Nothing says Yakuza like a biker in middle America. As Rose's chest heaves with light-hearted laughter, I find myself smiling as well. I'm glad the two get along, though a little part of me wishes I could be like Eileen. It took me months to warm up to Rose, yet... Eileen gets on with others so smoothly. It is a cool tattoo. Standing out in front of the apartment once more, we say our goodbyes for real this time. Even if she pointedly refused Rose's later offer of transport, at least she'll be going home on a full stomach. It's an odd atmosphere. It's time to say our goodbyes, especially given the night's chill having set in. Neither of us quite want to say the words. When you said you had a roommate, that's the last kind of person I expected you to be shacked up with. Shacked up with is really weird wording there. Um. Rose is nice. Once you get to know her. She's a family friend. So I guess you could say I got this apartment through connections. Eileen's not really wrong, though. Ever since starting at community college, I've gone from having a couple of very alike friends at high school to an increasing menagerie of odd characters. <laughs> oh, I feel like that's how, how my friendship groups always end up going to. Like, when I was in school, I was friends with people who were very similar to me. Now, I'm like, I think about it. And honestly, I think the funniest part is like my best friends, my most long-standing friends, are both 
super goth. They they have like really dark like aesthetics. Very cool, very like that kind of style. And I'm here and I'm pink and fluffy and teal. And it's like if you if you saw us standing next to each other, you would not think that we were friends, but we're like we're like family. <laughs> we're so close we've been friends for so long and it's it's always it's it's so funny how how the aesthetics change i love it oh to be fair you've also considered getting a tattoo of your name oh the constant the constellation that would be such a good tattoo oh that would be great oh you should do that that would be so good uh i actually have a tattoo i have a tattoo on my hip i've I've mentioned it in passing before, but I don't think I've, like, actively posted it anywhere. Only just, like, in replies to people. But I, I have a tattoo on my hip. I have a grief seed from Madoka Magica. And I love it. I love this tattoo so much. It took me five years to get it. I had the idea for the tattoo, and I was like, I really want this as a tattoo. I'm going to wait five years and see if I still want it. And if I do, I think that's a fair indication that I should get it as a tattoo, and I did. And ever since I got it, it's like, I can't imagine my hip without the tattoo now. Like, it feels like the tattoo was meant to be there. And I love it, I love it so much. I am I wish I had more opportunities to show my tattoo off, but honestly, it's like, it's, it's a little awkward. Like, I'd have to bear my midriff, and I'm a little, <laughs> a little self-conscious. But it's a really nice tattoo, I love my tattoo. I would like to get another one on the other hip as well, but it's not, like, a huge priority. But if I did get another tattoo, I, I know what I would get as well. Because the tattoo I have, it's it's just it's just black. It's just, a, like, a solid black tattoo of, like, the outline of the grief seed. And if I got another one, I would also want it to be a solid black tattoo. I wouldn't want, like, shading or colour or anything, because I'd want it to match. But I would really love to get a tattoo of... A crescent moon with a cat silhouette sitting on it. Like, that's what I would get on the other hip. Because it has, like, symbolic meaning for me as well. Like, regarding, like, a, a close friend of mine that I lost. And I think it would be, like, a really nice... Nice symbolic tattoo. And also just having a cat tattoo would feel right for me. <laughs> but yeah, that's something that hasn't happened. It might do in the future. Hasn't happened yet. But if, if it ever does... I will be telling everyone about <laughs> oh that's actually super cool thank you I'm glad you think so I really like it I, I like it a lot right here we go back to our increasing menagerie of odd characters the way Eileen looks as she gazes at the building catches me off guard it's hardly the comfortable existence she seems to have uh, it's hardly the comfortable existence she seems to have, Rose and I pretty much eking out a living with what scraps we get. Yet she looks so wistful. Yeah, I... It's like she may... She may have, like, the money stability and that kind of stuff, but I, I feel like there's a lack of that, like, emotional connection at home. Like, it's, it's, a, it's nice having a family to return to. Uh. You really have a nice thing going, don't you? Oh. Yeah. I guess so. Oh. Um, if you ever want to visit again, you're definitely welcome. She gives an amused snort and a smile. <laughs> I'll have to take you up on that sometime. Yes. Moments tick by as the two of us stand out on the sidewalk, neither quite knowing what to say next. I want her to stay around some more to talk to, but I know it's already getting late. Idly thinking over our dinner together for something to talk with her about, one particular part of the conversation keeps sticking out. Replaying it in my head, I can feel my face going red before I can cover it with my hands. You're thinking, you're thinking about the boyfriend comment, huh? Oh, brainstorming outfits to show off the grief seat. Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, you're super intimidated but by the idea of tattoo people judging you for the tattoo you want. Oh, I, I don't like the, the, the you have to worry about that. It feels like a shame. 
Oh, funny you say that because the tattoo artists you know all have something so silly. One of them has Germa. Wait, Germa on their heel? That's like the. That's such a good tattoo idea. That's incredible. Wait. <laughs> but uh, I feel like, especially like tattoo artists, no decent tattoo artist will make fun of like a design idea you have, I think. Like, I think if a tattoo artist kind of like scoffed at an idea I had, I would not use that tattoo artist. I would I would simply walk away and find another one. <laughs> but it, it it is a it must be a little intimidating. Oh, I I, I want to see Germa tattoo now. There's probably quite a few people who have gotten tattoos of Germa, aren't there? Thinking about it. Ha. Huh. I know what I'm googling later. Anyway, Ah, replaying it in my head. I can feel my face going red before I can cover it with my hands. What's wrong? I can't believe Rose was talking about that kind of stuff, <laughs> even though you've just met her. Sorry about that. That, that kind of stuff. That's all right. I'm the one who brought it up. That's right. You're just as bad. <laughs> I love how indignant she sounds there. I give her shoulder a firm tap. Immediately feeling conscious of the gesture, I pull away from her and look elsewhere, fuming away in my embarrassment. <laughs> Eileen rocks back and forth between her heels and the ball of her feet to pass the time while I recover, hands not quite knowing what to do. Eventually, thankfully, Eileen breaks the silence between us. Thanks for inviting me here. I'm glad to have been over tonight. Ah, I'm glad she was here. Oh, you were looking at tattoo artists in your area and saw one of them posting on Facebook bragging about refusing people who wanted tattoos that he thinks are bad. I feel like that's so rude. That's so rude. Who would do that? That's, that's, that's mean. Oh, it wasn't their heel. It was between their shin and calf area. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> oh, twofold will be much less crass. I see you. I'm I'm here like oh my goodness my 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 pure heart what is going on here no I'm, I'm I don't mind either way <laughs> oh this this is so tender though I'm I love them why the music as well here is so good to be honest I had you pegged as some spoiled little delicate flower when I first met you. You know, the kind who coasts along on their parents' attention before the real world punches them in the face. Ah. It looks like you have your life pretty sorted, though. You've got a good head on your shoulders, friends, and a cool roommate. You've managed to scratch together a pretty decent life for yourself. Oh. She just gives a long breath, rocking back and forth on her feet as she tries to put some words together. I want to thank her for the kind words, but I'm left speechless after such a warm-hearted appraisal of my current world. I don't really know what to say now. I guess I feel a bit dumb for lecturing no, you so much. No, don't feel... Ooh. Don't feel like that. It's fine, really. My frantic brushing off of the idea puts the both of us on the back foot. Smiling with that wonderful, rare smile of hers, she seems to accept the situation. Oh, it really, it, it feels so... But it, the fact that both of them envy each other's lives is... Oh. It's like, Allison is just like, I wish I had what she has. Eileen is just like, I wish I had what she has. <laughs> they need to combine. They need to become roommates and have... dinner together. Before I can say anything more, the blonde girl turns to begin the long walk back home. She's as confident as ever. Things just happened around me, and I worked problems out as they occurred. Is that really worth respect? It feels strange to have someone I admired to turn that right back on me. I feel my heart sting as her figure gets smaller in the dark night sky. But there's nothing I can say or do, just watch her go. 
No. The cold night's breeze wafts past the balcony, my thin jacket doing little to stop it. The only noise to be heard is the odd car rushing down the street through the darkness, or snippets of muffled music from neighbouring apartments. Moments like this are nice, circumstances aside. Just being able to be alone with my thoughts without the distraction of others. That said, I already have my answer to what had been on my mind. That was the real point of this dinner, after all. Yeah, I, th I think she may have realised that she like likes Eileen. When I modelled for her, I wanted to be a part of something that was important to Eileen. Even before then, I wonder if the times I tried to get closer weren't a friendship alone. What I felt as I watched Eileen walk away was all the confirmation of my feelings I needed. A dark figure suddenly appears, taking no heed of my surprise as it leans against the balcony beside me. As I compose myself once more, the familiar acrid smell passing my nose tips me off before my eyes do. Hi, Rose. Don't scare me like that! Oh. <laughs> I just got startled by the cutscene. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I just got startled by the cutscene appearing. Oh, oh goodness. Don't scare me like that. Please. <laughs> hey, I called out. Not my fault you were daydreaming. Uh, her mention of it brings all my worries flooding right back. Hardly wanting to look wow. at Rose while thinking about all this, I turn back and try to ignore her as best I can. <laughs> Rose mentioned how I should think about finding a partner sometime while in college. My parents too, and even my high school friends before I came. I was content to focus on school and keep such complications out of mind until my life was all set up and ready. College has already set me right on that account. Life doesn't go on hold until you're ready to face it. Rose simply blows a puff of smoke, a thin stream passing her lips and disappearing into the night sky. I try to keep my mouth shut, but the smell proves too much for me as I bring my hand to my face. <coughs> That's terrible! Yeah. Ugh, cigarette smoke. Ugh. You're the one who banishes me here, remember? <laughs> I hate to admit it, but she does have a point. Rose stubbornly makes a point of taking a puff of her cigarette, but soon notices that something is amiss. Come on, out with it. What's on your mind? Oh. <sighs> is she about to come out? Oh, I'm feeling nervous for her. I'm. Oh, I feel so nervous for her. It'd be easy enough to wave her off. One of the things I like about Rose is that she knows when to step back. And this is the kind of thing plenty of people keep private. But somehow, even if I haven't told Eileen how I felt, I kind of want someone else to know. I think I like someone. Oh, that, th that expression on her face is so sweet. Oh my goodness, I'm so proud of her. I'm... This is... Oh... This is huge. This is so big. Oh, she looks so shy. I watch her reaction with the best attempt I can muster at casual interest. I'm surprised by how unsurprised Rose is. After a tortuously long time, she finishes her puff of the cigarette and takes it from her mouth. <laughs> you had the look of someone with that on the mind. It's that Eileen girl, right? To be fair, I don't think she was very subtle. To be fair, I think it, with the amount of longing looks she gave, I think it probably was not subtle. But I think Alison is going to be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's gay time. It's gay time. It's gay time. My mind blanks. She picked that up herself? 
She isn't taken off guard by my liking a girl at all? <laughs> the expressions are so perfect in this. Ah. Oh. The knot of anxiety I hadn't even noticed forming inside of me suddenly twists and turns. The expected spluttering explana explanation suddenly not needed. I psyched myself up so much only for it to go nowhere. The silence between us continues as Rose patiently waits for me to respond. It's just... What's supposed to come after saying that? I didn't think you knew. About... Eileen, or, you know. Well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a girl was about as subtle as a sledgehammer. <laughs> I love that. Kinda hard to ignore what's in front of your face, you know. Yeah. Seeing you two together, it all clicked. Ah. You don't think I'm weird? Apparently feeling a little more sure of what to say, she gives a disarming smile. Believe me, I'm not in any position to call <laughs> someone weird. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, there's nothing wrong with being weird as well. I think I'm weird. I think I'm pretty weird, and I'm fine with that. I like being weird. It's more fun than being not weird. Just like, you don't think I'm weird? Well, like, yeah, you are weird, but not because of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's just like, girl, you invited each other to your apartments. You you did like the, the, meet, the meet the parents dinner, but meet the roommate instead. I love it. I love being weird. Oh my goodness. Lara, hello. Thank you for the raid. Welcome on in. How's it going? How was your stream? I am I'm so glad you raided when you did and not like 5 seconds later because I was about to start like the 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 Riverdale yeah, I'm I'm a weirdo speech. I would have been so embarrassed if you raided and I was in the middle of that. <laughs> but welcome. Welcome on in. I hope you had a good stream. Welcome. Welcome to um Yuri time. Yuri time. It would have been so funny. <laughs> it would have been funny for everyone except me, I think. But yeah, we were just talking about how it's fine to be weird. Also, Allison is gay. <laughs> she just came out, but she didn't actually have to come out because Rose already figured it out. Uh, you did, did your first co-working stream and it went well. Oh, I'm so glad it went well. I hope you were super productive. Thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. To anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri, I'm a pink haired cat girl from the UK and I love comfy games and puzzle games and gay visual novels with incredible women. Um, guess which one I'm playing today. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. I'm currently playing First Snow, which is a Yuri visual novel. It's actually free to play if anyone wants to play it. And it's the prequel to a visual novel called Twofold which I plan on playing as soon as I finish this. As soon as I'm done with the pre the, the, the prequel, I'm going to be going into twofold. But yeah, I've been meaning to play this for a while and it's taken so long, but I'm finally getting around to it. Uh, also, I love the blurry Tiffany above my head. I'm glad. There was a, there was a moment in the game with a, a blurry phone photo and I was like, hey, looks like Tiffany. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. But also as well, if you have to head off after your stream, if you gotta go get some dinner or have a rest or anything, please don't feel like you have to stick around. But if you do want to stick around for a bit and lurk, this game is incredible. It's so good. It's it's making me feel so many tender emotions in my heart. <laughs> but thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. It is very appreciated. Yeah. Yeah, it is very gay. In the, the greatest, greatest ways. Hey, that's not what you're supposed to say. <laughs> she elbows me in response to my mostly unintentional bite back. With the situation diffused, I managed to calm down a little. Just saying I like her makes my thoughts feel all the more real. 
my heart skipping a beat as I repeat the words in my mind. Rose thinks to herself a little before snuffing out her cigarette on the ashtray and looking at me squarely. Sorry, I shouldn't be so flippant when you're all oh. worked up. I get that coming out can be hard. For what it's worth, I really appreciate that you trust me so much. Oh, it's so, it's so nice. I mean, I, I figured Rose wouldn't wouldn't be mean about it or anything. Like, she seems very much the type of person who would just be like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, you do you. Now I'm gonna go eat a burger, I don't know. <laughs> the warm smile on her face proves infectious, all tension from the air fading away. I hardly mind now that I've managed to unwind a little. I get the feeling she's stumbling through this herself. Minutes go by with only the passing of cars beneath us for noise, both of us savouring the peacefulness of the winter's night. At loose ends, I lean against the balcony railing and finally break the silence. What should I do? Um, good question. I don't think that's something I can decide for you. Just remember that you're still young. Yes. So young, so, so you don't think it'll work out. Oh no, she didn't mean it like that. Oh, you're so defensive, Allison. I, I can understand it, but oh. I'm not saying that. Just take it easy, all right? Relationships are a pain in the ass. Spoken by someone with experience. <laughs> this isn't what I'd hoped Rose would say at all, but that doesn't mean she's wrong. I thought love was supposed to feel all happy and warm, but I feel more nervous than anything else. Mm, yeah, that's... that's it. That's... that's... It, it's very nerve-wracking. Butterflies. Also, thank you for the hydrate, Bob! Let me have some more monster. Another sip of my monster. Thank you for the drive-by hydrate. <laughs> No, oh, I'm I'm so proud of Allison. She's so good. I can understand why Eileen patted her on the head. Because looking at this art, I I also I want to pat her on the head. I wanna pat her on the head, hold on. There, yeah, okay, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> head pats for Allison. She she's got a very head head patable head. Ah. Welcome to relationships. Falling for someone is easy. It's what comes next that's hard. Yep. Oh, the little smile. Her disarming smile at least puts me a little more at ease. I'm glad I have Rose here for me. In many ways, I feel like we can't relate to each other. But we can still have this kind of conversation and understand each other. We're just two girls talking about love oh you're a good girl allison i promise that whatever happens you can call on me okay uh, thanks but you know if things do work out you're still gonna have to learn how to be quiet for my sake if you bring her around rose please rose <laughs> rose please Rose. She has her own apartment. I mean, what? <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh. <laughs> I said nothing. I said nothing. Shush. Shush, shush. It's fine. It's Christmas. Look. That's a big tree. That is a large looking tree, wow. Are they actually using like this this crane to lift the baubles onto the tree? These are huge. These baubles are so big. Wow, tall tree. While I'd had my doubts, the city workers managed to get the Christmas tree in the city's main square finished, just on schedule for the first day of December. 
Its oversized tinsel and baubles gleam happily in the morning's light, proudly announcing the coming holiday. Rose takes my paws in the middle of the city square as an excuse for a break, setting down her bags as I look up to the huge tree before us. That's a really big tree. It's a very large tree. It's not the tree that's most interesting, so much as the crowd around us. Everyone walks to and fro just a little faster than normal walking speed, hurrying from shop to shop while hardly even glancing at the Christmas tree looming over everything. <laughs> you forgot what you realized, you were distracted by orb. Me too. I was immediately just like, what the heck, these are so big. The question is, how heavy are they? I feel like even if they're hollow, they would have to be so hel so so like heavy. But they'd have to have a way of attaching them securely. What an impressive tree. I love that. I think I read something once about feeling alone even in a crowd. So many faces pass by, from couples holding hands to businessmen to groups of friends. Yet, I feel more disconnected than when I'm actually alone. <laughs> Thank you for clipping that. Thank you for clipping that. Oh my god. Uh, uh. The clicking of a lighter next to me reminds me of my companion, the cigarette now perched in the corner of her mouth, glowing brightly. <sighs> Shame we couldn't park closer. Downtown's pretty crazy these days, isn't it? Maybe we should put up our own Christmas tree. Hey, I got a tree for us a few days ago. I was the one who bought that. It's also like a foot tall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The cigarette perched in her mouth tilts downwards as, as she looks at me, her smile turning just a little less cheerful. Hmm. Missing holidays at home, are you? <clears throat> a bit. She clamps onto my shoulder and gives me a firm shake. Hang in there. I might not be much company, but at least you got someone around. Were you homesick when you first moved out from home? No. Given the circumstances, no. I don't think you appreciate how lucky you are sometimes. Wandered straight onto that landmine. Rose has never talked about her immediate family in the few months I've known her, so maybe I should have taken the hint. Noticing the gazes of a few around us have turned upward, I look up curiously. Looks like the weather's turned, the morning chill turning to snow. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so nice. <laughs> Piss off, Winter. <laughs> what a tonal shift. I'm just here like, oh, it's so pretty. It's so nice. Rose is just, uh... Oh my goodness. Uh, if you mentioned you appreciate Rose, I also appreciate Rose. Uh, with a dissatisfied puff, she puts out her cigarette on a nearby bin lid before flicking it in with a practiced motion. Tossing her bags up once more, we continue the slog back to the bike. Uh, chin up, eh? I was gonna say this later, but I bought your favorite while you weren't looking. Oh! <gasps> Strawberry trifle? Uh-huh. You know it. Just a thanks for pulling your weight a bit more. It's nice to see you getting yourself together. Just as I'm about to thank her, a loud ping comes from my pocket. A little sheepish, I take my phone from my pocket to check what the message is. I'm sorry, but this screen, without any other context, with that as her profile picture, is... <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. This would be ominous in any other context. But in this moment, it's just like, oh my goodness, there's, there's a, an attractive woman behind me. Confused, I stop walking and turn around. I'll turn about. Turn around. Ah, oh, hello. 
Oh, she's, she's approaching. <laughs> Eileen holds her hand high as she slowly walks up the street, slipping her phone into her pocket as she arrives. I'm happy to see her, but something makes me hesitate. Something Rose picks up on, going by her churlish grin. I know full well I've fallen for Eileen. My stomach tying itself into knots at the sight of her makes me realise that asking her out will have to come sooner rather than later. If she's even interested in girls, that is. That is the biggest worry. That is always the biggest stressful thing. Like, it is really easy to get a crush on a woman because women are great. But if you if you are a lesbian and you get a crush on a woman, it's not just about asking her out. You got to find out if she's straight first. <laughs> it's a whole extra level of complication. Trying to put my worries out of mind as best I can, I do my best to act normal. You've sure been getting some use out of that phone. Your <laughs> teleport's behind you, nothing personnel, kid. Morning. Starting to see the appeal of these things, yeah. Morning, Rose. Hey. Sup. Just now for a walk. The apartment gets stifling after a while. Not interrupting anything, am I? When she puts it like that, she sounds far older than she should. In fact, given she didn't own a smartphone, likes simple walks alone, and spends her days painting, I'm starting to doubt the girl I fell for is really my own age. <laughs> As the two strike up a casual chat, I remember how Eileen and I came to meet, being pushed into the club, taking chance after chance to come closer to her in hopes of spending more time together. It's only that persistence which gained me her friendship. My heart begins to beat as I talk myself into the plan forming in my head. Pushing myself got me this far? Perhaps? If I could take one more step? Um... Hey, Rose? Can I leave these with you? She hesitates at the change of plans, the words blurted out before I can stop myself. Sure. <laughs> sure, I'll see you later. If you need a pick up, just call. She gets it. She gets it. She fully understands the assignment here. Yes, thank you. Before I can so much as thank her, Rose quickly starts the work of strapping the shopping bags to her bike. It'll probably be easier to get everything home without me on the back anyway. Eileen and I give our goodbyes to her as we walk on, Rose waving us off. As we go, I think I see a small grin on her face. I guess she worked it out. <laughs> well, you're the, the, the smirk as she left, it's so good. It's, it's so perfect. It makes me hope that Eileen saw it. <laughs> Once again, we're alone with each other. My stomach twists and turns as I desperately try to find some small talk to fill the air with. Not that Eileen looks fussed about it all. Buried in thought, I barely register us moving through the old wrought iron gates and into the city park. This is where she head pat me for the first time. Oh... <laughs> So giddy for these two. Me too. Me too. I'm. I. I I'm. I. I feel like I'm using the word tender a lot. I feel like it's the perfect word for their relationship. It's. It fills me with such tenderness. It's so tender. All of the moments are so tender. I'm just. <laughs> I love them. Ah, barely register us moving through the old wrought iron gates and into the city park. The water in the pond lies nearly still, the ducks lazily bobbing about with the odd flap of their wings to shake off the snow. The normally rustling branches of the trees stay silent as they gather falling snow, green slowly turning to white. With everyone in town busy shopping, all that's left to be heard as we walk along the wide path are our footsteps on freshly fallen snow. Do you come here much? Yeah, every so often. Nice to just think to myself a bit without being cooped up. You? <laughs> Only when I was younger. I like to feed bread to the ducks. That's bad for them. Feed them seeds. Or peas. 
Wait, are peas bad as well? I don't remember. Feed them seeds. Don't feed bread to the ducks. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I should have guessed that answer from you. All I can do is pout as she gives a smug smile at my expense. Even as we walk on through the otherwise empty park, I can feel my eyes lingering on her. Oh! Ah! Yeah, peas are okay. Yeah, that's... It's just a little part of me is remembering. I'm pretty sure I saw something saying it's better to feed peas to the ducks than bread because bread like bloats them and makes them think they're full when they're not. And also if they don't eat it, there's just like rotten bread in the water. But I think like bird seed is just the best option all around either way. <laughs> oh, but... <laughs> Even as we walk on through the otherwise empty park, I can feel my eyes lingering on her. <sighs> that difference between us is probably what drew me to her, now that I think about it. I've never felt like this towards anyone else before, but I know my feelings are genuine as I gaze at her. If she spends Christmas with her family, I won't get to see Eileen again until classes start in the new year. Telling her what I feel might ruin everything, but I don't want this to linger like a hanging thread. If she can push herself towards her goals, then so can I. Ooh. As I come to a stop, the ceasing of my footsteps on the crushed snow makes Eileen turn toward me, towards me. I... <laughs> As her eyes fall to mine, my heart begins to race. I'm instantly filled with doubts, but now it's too late. I've psyched myself up so much that it's surely showing. All my life, others have helped push me forwards. Now, I have to do something for myself. Eileen taught me how I have to do that. Eileen, I wanted to tell you something. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I'm I'm genuinely really nervous. I am so nervous right now. Why am I so nervous? <laughs> oh my goodness. With my voice shaking and a hand clutching my other arm tightly out of nervousness, I take a long breath to clear my mind and sort out the words in my head. I ball my fists as I feel my hands shaking. <laughs> Mogo, hello. Hi, Mogo. You, you, it's, I think it's time. I think it's time. <gasps> Ooh, I'm so nervous. After spending my whole life with such uh -huh. a big family, this was the first time I've ever tried to live by myself. Uh -huh. I was really lonely at first and didn't really know what was going on. But recently, I realized that loneliness hasn't been around. I met so many wonderful people and had so many nice experiences. Now, I'm looking forward to every day and what fun things might happen. Uh, uh. A lot of that is thanks to you. So, I wanted to thank you for helping me. <laughs> and a heartbeat in the background, that's me. That's me, my heart is racing right now. <laughs> oh, it's so tender. I, I keep using the word tender. It just, it's uh, tender moments. This isn't exactly poetry so far, but I think I'm getting my feelings across right. Eileen simply looks at me, accepting the praise with only a touch of confusion. Well, thanks. It's nice to be appreciated like that. <laughs> it's more than that, though. I mean, I first thought it was just friendship, but... Why... Why can't I be more confident than this? My throat feels like it's closing as my nerves get the better of me, and it only gets worse the more I try to speak. It's... I... <laughs> I'm so busy reading Eileen's expression that I lose track of what I'm saying. I try desperately to force something out, but no words come to me. <laughs> Looking at her face, though, 
I don't think the rest needs to be said. <laughs> oh my, oh, that, oh wow. We just look at each other silently, the winter snow falling between us. She looks gentle somehow. Stepping forward, she looks down at my blushing face. From here, I can see the faint red in her cheeks clearly. I can't think of anything else. Just that gentle, calm face that I've never seen her wear before. After a moment's hesitation, Eileen brings her hands forward, grasping my shoulders delicately. <gasps> I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, a, I'm clapping like a child right now. I'm... This this is what I'm here for. This is what I'm here for. This is what I've been waiting for. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I, cannot uh, think. Uh, uh, I love them. I love them so much. I I love them so much. I'm I have so much I have so many emotions in my heart for these two right now. I I love them so much. I'm <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh. <laughs> Me, yes! literally. Oh my god! Literally me right now. Literally me right now. <laughs> and then, as she leans down, everything stops. I reflexively gasp in surprise as her soft lips press gently to mine, but it ends up stifled. With my body utterly frozen, I find myself completely in the grasp of the girl holding me, her breath tingling against my face. <laughs> the sounds, the smells, everything beyond Eileen and I falls from my consciousness. All that's left is this wonderful warm feeling flowing through my entire body. <laughs> Minutes, seconds, I have no idea how much time passes. I just know that I don't want it to stop. Eventually, sadly, Eileen's lips part from mine. Yay! Yay! Straightening herself. <laughs> I don't think she can straighten herself here. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I... <laughs> Straightening herself as she steps back, Eileen takes a long, shuddering breath as I stare dumbstruck at her wildly blushing face. The feeling of Eileen's lips pressed to mine replays endlessly in my confused mind, clouding everything else. Eileen, you... <laughs> Eileen, you... You're gay! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm making jokes because my heart is too full and I need to break the, the intensity somehow. <laughs> You're gay! Ah, I love them. I love them so much. Anyway, uh, auto mod grabbed that, but now I have the permitted term "you're gay" in my in my permitted terms list. <laughs> I love that. I love that it's just like you can just type "you're gay" and that is fine. But if you try and add more a's there, you 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 you're in rough territory. <laughs> Too full, too too full, too fold, too fold, too too full of emotions, too tender. The air between us falls quiet. Eileen left waiting for a reply as I stand in a silent daze. Simple shock is one part of it, but far from all. Eileen is not only interested in women, but also in me. I feel like my heart could burst from the relief. It's only now that I see her fidgeting, playing with her hair and unable to quite stand still. I wonder how long that's been going on unnoticed. It makes me realize she's as unfamiliar at the situation as I am. Neither of us knows what we're supposed to do or say right now. Here I was trying to explain my feelings when Eileen rushes ahead and does something brash like that. Overcome with my own flood of emotions and confusion, it's Eileen who ends up having to reluctantly move things forward. Sure, 
hope I didn't misinterpret that. <laughs> no, you didn't. Don't worry. Her attempt to play off her nervousness is betrayed by her blushing. I finally realized just why she's so uncomfortable right now. She's left herself vulnerable. It's the first time I've seen her exposed like this, her feelings plain to see. I didn't know you felt that way. <laughs> I entertained the idea, I guess. Didn't ever think you'd be the one to make the first move. Neither did I, honestly. <laughs> I 100% did not expect Allison to make the first move here. I am so proud of Allison. She's come so far! The character development! I'm so proud of her! What a... what a... what a... what a good... Ah! Say so we'll go out with me? <gasps> yeah, she said it! No, I just kissed you for the sake of it. <laughs> <laughs> of course I will, you dolt! No, oh, it's so romantic! I love it! Oh my god, I'm so happy! I... ah... Uh, Guess we're in this thing together now, huh? Yeah, I guess we are. For all she tries to play things cool, it's obvious Eileen's as awkward about this as I am. The only reply I can muster, and perhaps the only one needed, is to smile. I, I do I want to keep playing but it's already six o'clock so I need to stop so I need to stop here but that is such a lovely lovely scene to end the stream on let me save let me save my game the day after oh my goodness that seems like a good spot to to start it at next time as well though and I don't know how much is left of this I don't know how long first snow is but either way like as soon as I finish this we're going into twofold so uh <laughs> I'll make sure I have that downloaded for next week anyway but I yeah I don't know how long the game is how much more there is and also I'm a I will probably get distracted along the way anyway as I always do with games like this three acts if you recall correctly okay so we've probably got still at least another stream of this because we have not started act three yet we're <laughs> I'm guessing this is going to be like the last scene of Act 2 and then we'll be into Act 3. But uh, what, a, what a great spot. I'm so glad we got the confession before I have to end the stream. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh, I love I love this game. I love this so much. This whole, this whole experience is so good. But yeah, it is now 6 o'clock, which means it is time to feed Tiffany. And also myself, I need to get dinner because um, I didn't eat much for lunch and I'm very hungry. <laughs> but oh, I'm, I, I love this game so much. I love this game so much. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm, my, my heart feels so full. My heart is so full. Time to feed myself and Tiffy. Yes, we gotta feed the baby and also my cat. <laughs> it's me, I'm the baby, sorry. <laughs> But yes, with that, I shall... Bloop. I'll head on over to here and we can find somebody to raid. Let's see... See who is live to send a raid over to. Let me, let me move over just a little bit. Like that. There we go. Let's see who's on to raid. But uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. I'm... I'm so glad I'm finally playing this. I'm I'm having such a, a wonderful time playing it. And I'm so excited to play Twofold as well. It feels good. I'm still... There's still a little part of me that is so in disbelief that it's been a year since I finished Please Be Happy. Like, I feel like I only just finished that and I was taking a little break until the next game. My little break has been, like, 14 months, I think. It's wild. I can't believe it's been so long. But yeah, that was that was a really really nice stream as well. I love I love how many things we ended up talking about too. Like we ended up talking about lip balm and cars and what else? Everything. We talked about everything. <laughs> but yes, it's been so nice. Who is on? 
Sylphie's on. I'm gonna raid Sylphie. I'm gonna raid Sylphie. Sylphie's doing some live 2D rigging at the moment. We're, we're going Verpro direction. We're going Verpro, because uh, Sylphie is currently rigging Geist's model. Rigging Geist's live 2D model and streaming the process. So I'm sending the raid right over to, to Sylphie. <laughs> As soon as I saw them online, I was just like, oh, I know where this raid's going. But, oh, I'm... I always love watching Sylphie's live 2D streams as well, because they help me to realize what I need to do. <laughs> when I'm trying to rig my own model, which uh, is still very much in progress. I'm The re-rig is going very slowly. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. It's... It's felt like a very comfy vibe stream today. It's felt like a very nice time. Oh, Ath, hello! Oh, you're joining right as I'm ending. I'm just getting ready to send the raid along. Oh, but I'm doing well. I'm doing well, thank you. I hope you're doing well too. I mean, at least you, you came in time to, to hop on the raid train if you want to. <laughs> thank you for stopping in either way. And thank you so much everyone who's been here. Like. Whether you've been chatting or lurking the whole time, thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate you being here. But yeah, it's nice to see you too. Hopefully next time, I believe. But yes, we're going to send the raid over now. Here is the raid message. And we're going comfy today. We're going comfy. We, we got comfy emote. If you're sub, we got the, the Lyri comfy. If not, we will send numerous hearts. And I'm going to send the raid over to the lovely Sylphie, amazing artist, amazing life to be rigger, amazing person, my favorite circus pigeon of all time. And I'm going to go get some dinner. <laughs> go feed myself and my cat. But yes, thank you so much everyone for joining me today. It has been, it's been so comfy. It's been so good. My heart is so full. I'm just gonna like carry this warmth for the rest of the day now. I'm just. <laughs> I feel so happy. Please be happy. I'm happy. The first snow has made me happy. But yes, that is it from me for now. I'll be back tomorrow. And I figured it's been a while since I I did some house flipping. So we're gonna do a a bit of casual house flipping tomorrow. So probably a lot more chatting again. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much everyone for joining me today, and until next time, bye bye!